episode 61, Gaming Enforcement Agency. Few minor technical difficulties, and for which I apologise. It's very hot in here, and the studio doesn't like it. Uh, joining me tonight, of course, Unky Dunky. How you doing, mate? Mate, I'm doing very, very well, mate. Uh, looks like that dummy with the heat in there is going to be uh, melted uh, down to its nubs by the end of this show. <laughs> that sounds right. Uh, Bully, you're in the third slot. How you doing, mate? Oh, I am doing well, mate. As uh, mentioned, uh, back into the uh, world of the living, and we'll have a chat about the PSVR a bit later, but uh, enjoying that. Fantastic. The run of show is as follows. Games, interrogation and deliberation. The eight games we've been playing this evening. We'll go through those. And then it is the news segment. Anki, how's the news segment shaping up this evening? Mate, it's shaping up pretty well. Kicked in five doors this week, so I can't wait to talk about that. Excellent work. And then, of course, it'll be the uh, new releases as brought to us by the Game Informers. Excellent list that we use each and every week. Thank you to those guys. And then it's everyone's favourite segment, the standoff. Anki, what does it take to be in the standoff tonight? Uh, as Bully alluded to, PSVR 2 this week is out. So we're asking what is the most fun VR experience we have had. And of these, which one would we recommend for you to play? Only one you can play it we're going to tell you we're going to vote you get in the chat there let us know what one of these ones you would like to play and let us know your most fun experiences you've had in vr there can be only one and then of course it is audience integration bully are you right to patrol the youtube chat for us this evening as we go flick up the comments as they happen live and also the votes for the standoff from the audience how does that sound mate most certainly can and uh, get out of sean games who's jumped into a chat already for us Hey, Sean, how are you doing, mate? Welcome back, sir. Great to have you here. All right, guys, I suggest we kick it off. Let's start games, interrogation, and liberation. All right, first up this evening, it's Atomic Heart. That's right, Atomic Heart. Anki, I don't think there has been any controversy around this game at all, mate, so no need for preamble. I'll just hand it over to you. What are your thoughts? No, no controversy at all. We won't talk about that. We'll just talk about the video game itself. So... Uh, yeah, good to see that um, you've mimicked uh, one of the um, main bad guy characters from the game in on the show tonight. So very on brand there. I've killed, I reckon I've killed quite a few of you in this game already. <laughs> um, but no, so far so good with this game. I think the first thing you sort of notice in this game when you first load it up is that how pretty it looks. And this is this studio's first, you know, foray into a video game. And I think they've done a pretty good job so far. Um, they have the Unreal Engine 4 singing in this game. It's amazing. They really do. It looks really nice. It's running really silky smooth at 60 frames per second. There aren't any other graphic options from what I can tell in this game. It's just running natively at 60 frames without a performance mode or anything like that. Um, there's not too many other sliders in the game at all, which I kind of expect from a sort of a, a pretty junior developer when it comes to this sort of stuff. But what this game is, it sort of evokes a bit of Wolfenstein, the New Order, um, a bit of Half-Life in there, a bit of Bioshock. Like it's got a bit of all this stuff culminating in it. Um, and the opening of this game was great. Like it's it's a little bit slow for me at the moment for someone who's been playing stuff like Zelda and Metroid, which is all about gameplay. But to jump into this and be slowed down a bit at the start, I get why they do this. Even Bioshock realistically starts quite slow, although admittedly you are zapping people with electricity in your fingers pretty quickly in that game. And this takes a little bit longer than that to get going. But once it does get going, um, I was really impressed with the sort of interior design and lighting and the, the bad guys you are fighting at the start, even though the melee combat is not anything to write home about. It's still fun enough to be hitting these robots that have weird mustaches on them. And, Can you know, I jump fighting. on that? Yeah. I absolutely love the melee combat in this. For me, excuse me, for me, the standard melee combat at the minute is Fortnite. And I think this handles better than Fortnite. Like swinging the axe in Fortnite is not as good as swinging the axe in this. Back to you, Anki. No, it's probably true. It's just there's not many mechanics yet, and I think it does open up a bit once you start unlocking a few more moves and stuff with the axe, but all I've really got is like a power spinner move now at the moment, and um, just, just as a standard melee attack, and you've got to be, you can hit B to hit dodge if you're on the Xbox, and why wouldn't you be on the Xbox? This thing's on Game Pass. Um, so I think it's full price on everything else, so um, definitely a, a good win for Xbox there to get an IP like this um, day one from a third-party developer. Um, do we know, sorry, if I could just ask you on that point, um, do we know if this game was in any sort of trouble until Microsoft gave them that uh, Game Pass bag or was it always going to be fine? Oh, I had heard rumours somewhere that there was some kind of development hell around it. I don't know what that hell was like or what it was because I remember seeing gameplay trailers and stuff for this quite a while ago and thinking it looked quite unique and quite you know pretty mm. and just couldn't wait to play this game look, looking at the gameplay stuff. I, I, so I couldn't speak to it definitely, but I feel like I've listened to some podcasts somewhere, but I could be blending this with other games that I've been listening to about this week. So um, 
the back to the game, um, I've only, I don't know how many hours you guys have put in. I'm probably maybe two, two and a half hours in. I've just sort of got out of the main first underground area. I'm sort of out into the open world. Whereabouts are you guys up to? <laughs> so I am exactly three and a half hours in, but I'm still not out of that first area. <laughs> and I can understand why, because some of those, there's a lot of puzzle sort of rooms, like grand puzzle rooms you've got to do in that. And they don't hold your hand a whole lot, but you do sort of have a, a checkpoint cursor sort of telling you where to go at any given time. Um, but then once you're sort of in those rooms, you've kind of got to figure out how the systems work using your telekinesis and all that kind of stuff to get you, to get the job done. So I found myself stuck on a bit of a puzzle today and trying to figure out, but it was actually quite quite a good puzzle. It, was, it wasn't stupid. It wasn't like hard for the sake of being hard. You just have to sort of think about things and how to get different places and remember all the abilities um, you've been showed that you had that early on in the game. So, um, so far, I really enjoy it. I think the underground sections look better than the open world i think once you're up in the open world it does look a little bit washed out compared to the lighting and stuff you're getting on the inside um, but being out once you are out it does you know have a nice sort of flow to gameplay and you can go into houses and scrounge for you know items and stuff and the way they have you scrounge for items is actually a, a, quite a cool idea i think instead Wait, of sorry just one question is the transition from uh interior to exterior as smooth as hogwarts uh no I don't like it's not too bad. Like it's not that grand. It's not as grand as something like a Breath of the Wild where you walk out. And it's like whoa, this is massive. They don't really go for that. Yeah. Um, but it is sort of a nice stark contrast from all the dark interiors and stuff you've been seeing to sort of come out and see all the trees and and all that stuff. What's going on? So I'm only probably maybe twenty minutes out into that open world. So and I've got a couple objectives that I'm just starting to work on. So again, this is sort of early impressions really for a game that is apparently between twenty thirty hours long. I think to complete. Yeah. Um, from what I've heard, so and it's got to be that Ubisoft trappings where I think you, once you've got the open world open, you can go out find different um, attachments for your guns and stuff, which yeah you use to upgrade these um, weapon stations, which I have to call out the most smuttiest weapon. Um, I don't even know what you want to call it. <laughs> I don't know if you've used it AI yet. Robot. Got a, AI robot, yeah, this thing just is so smutty. I haven't heard anything like it, and. I don't know whether it's good writing, but it did make me chuckle. This game does suffer from what a lot of games have been suffering recently is a lot of whinging, and this main character is insufferable. I don't like the main character. I think he sort of just gripes about stuff that we would grab. Oh, I've got to go get another one of these. It's like, yeah, it's like tired old tropes <laughs> in games. You've got to get four things, and he's whinging about it. If he's whinging about it, what makes you think we're not whinging about doing the same thing? So yeah. there's all that kind of stuff. He sounds very similar. I was trying to find who the voice actor was. He sounds very similar to the bloke from Dying Light or Dying Light 2, to be honest. I wouldn't be surprised oh. if, if it's not that guy because he sounds very similar. I know the native language for this game is Russian and you can flick it to Russian and apparently that and have subtitles that alleviate some of the annoying quips that he makes. But um, he's got another talking thing on his wrist. It seems to be the all the go with Forspoken having an English um, person talking at you through your wrist. So he seems to have the exact same thing, only it's his glove now, which does all these special abilities. But um, yeah, Bully, what are your thoughts on, on the topic? How many hours have you put in? Uh, probably two-ish. So I've done that sort of opening segment and then into the underground uh, part, which I'm thinking I'm pretty much towards the end of or just coming out of that now. So I haven't got out in the open world, but um, enjoying it. But <clears throat> enjoying it enough that, that there's a couple of little quirks with it, but I'm, I'm happy to keep pushing through and see where it goes. But uh, there's a couple of things. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the um, of the axe and the melee combat, to be honest with you. I don't um, – it doesn't really feel satisfying when you – I think – when I first took a robot's leg off with it, and I thought, oh, this is really cool. And I've tried to do that a couple of times since and just haven't been able to do it for some reason. So um, I'm not sure if that's uh, supposed to be a mechanic or whether it's just a fluke one-off sort of thing that I did. Um, but the only other thing that, that I have a gripe with is the uh, the dodge mechanic itself. So you've, uh, as you mentioned, Nunky, you push uh be on the xbox to dodge and you can dodge backwards or sideways or whatever and when the enemies are attacking and when they're going to do that powerful attack there's like a red ring that comes up around them to give you that that sort of prompt as well um but i sort of found especially and, and it might again it might change in the um open areas but when you're in those enclosed corridors and you you hit b to dodge backwards and you can find yourself being backed into a corner without and because it's first person you can't see what's around you and, and where you're going so there's a couple of times of I've sort of uh, done that and gone, got backed into a corner and then, you know, you've got two or three robots coming at you and you've got nowhere to go and you've got nowhere else to dodge and they sort of get you. So um, just a couple of little um, minor gripes with it. But I think, um, you know, there's there's enough there to see 
that I'd like to put at least another couple of hours into, into that open world and, and see how it plays out from there. If it continues with that sort of, you know, the occasional little thing that annoys you, I'll probably keep going. But if it gets any bigger than that, it's probably one of those ones that I'd... Yes, I've got a bit of interest in it, but I don't know if it's, yeah, something I'll see out entirely. But um, as you said, Unky, it's got a it's got a blend of a couple of different games. Bioshock, it's got, you know, Wolfenstein with that old history thing, which I actually don't mind. The, the sort of story that they've set up that, that Russia's effectively won World War Two and more or less the entire world's under the control of of Russia and, and the, the different way they've developed after that. So, you know, that sort of thing's interesting to me. I always like old and history sort of stuff and um, that was a big one of the big reasons I love Wolfenstein. So if they sort of continue down that path and it's got an interesting enough story, I can see myself playing, playing a fair I- few more hours into it. Can I ask you on that point, Billy, do you want to make, and I know we're all very early in, do you want to make a prediction as to where this game ends up? Like Bioshock, spoilers for Bioshock 1, uh, it's the downfall of an overly uh, capitalistic society. Do we think at the end of this game, Russia's going to fall? Like, is this leading up to their fall? Uh, I don't know if it's leading up to their fall. I'd I'd almost throw a quirk in there and say that they're – that it's not actually the Russians that are controlling it. It'll be the Germans or the Americans. Okay. That That's, I don't know, my weird yeah, take on it. Might be completely wrong. I'm not sure. Oh, we're all just guessing here. What about you, Anki? Any wild speculation you want to throw on where this game's headed, story-wise? Nah, way too early in the piece this time. So I, I know you're sort of working for your doctor friend at the moment and there's a bit of conspiracy stuff going on about trying to figure out who's pulling sort of the, the cables at the moment. So now I'll hold on my speculation. I'll see how long I can get into this game. I said the, the weapon stuff starting to open up now. So I've unlocked shotgun and I've got a handgun. I've also got another handgun that does some electrical damage and stuff like that. So um, no, it's if the combat can sort of, you know, keep me hooked and the powers and stuff actually work well within the, you know, the gameplay loop, um, then I could see myself playing this a bit longer. But there's a few other games that are sort of sucking me away at the moment that I'll talk about in a sec that um, have got pretty much everything right. So, no, I'll, I'll keep playing this. I would have played more of it. Um, however, uh, this week, for whatever reason, the game was pre-installed, 77 gig on the Xbox, played it first day, and then I had an update to do a patch the day later, went to do the update, and I had to do the whole 77 gig again. So, which pushed me back into the arms of another lover, which was... Can I get a little bit nerdy, a little bit more nerdy than usual on you and just ask, what did that cost you time-wise, 77 gigs on your connection? Uh, That's a good point. Uh, I probably started the download maybe about midday and I reckon it was done by six. Yeah, that's wild. Dear Lord. (laughs) Wild. Uh, And... uh, Few thoughts from me, guys. What do you reckon of the uh, throwing the loser sign out to get the uh, detective mode vision, black and white vision up? What's that about? I couldn't work that out for the life of me. Yeah, that's no, just part of his the way he does it. I don't know. I totally forgot how to do it. I was playing it before, and I totally forgot what I actually have to hit to actually do that. Ah, uh, it's RB, I think. Oh, and here's my tip double RB. For- that's right. Oh, there you go. My tip for anybody now, you guys might have read this straight off the top, and maybe it's just me who had to stumble across it a couple of hours in, but you can just hold RB down and loot like all the containers at once. You can just stand there and pan across holding it down. I thought I had to constantly click it. Oh, no, that's, that's that was what I was going to get to. I think you must have cut me off. Oh, but oh, that's, sorry, what I, that's, no, that's right. That's what I was getting to. Yeah, the, the, the mechanic for actually collecting stuff in the world is really cool. Hey, hold that down. He does a little flick with his fingers and just collects everything. I reckon that's quite a cool mechanic. And I love the way they do the shout out to the thing, uh, to the objects in the world that haven't been looted or a different color in detective yeah, mode. No. Uh, if you see on screen now, it's a zoom in of right at the start when you walk through that uh, robot development lab, they've got code scrolling on the screen. And I don't know if you blokes are prone to read it, but there's a few gags in there worth looking at, I reckon. Oh, no, I'll have to have a look at that. Another <laughs> nice touch, I think, is the... Um... The the water I can't remember what they call it the the floating water stuff that you see amber? Tra- tra- traverse through was it amber amber no it's not amber it's something else but there's a, I don't know if you've had the sound on or you know three D audio would ever gone through it but when you go through it, you hear the whispers of people that have been through there and and their thoughts and stuff it's really cool sort of audio design I think so if you haven't heard it keep your ear out for that because it's really cool. Cool. I will have to keep my ear out for it. I haven't. Uh, any closing thoughts from anyone or should we move along? Oh, Only one we do. I was just going to say when we we're talking about the development cycle, so I've done a bit of uh, poking around while you were chatting. So it looks like there was issues with uh, crunch, failed promises in regarding to bonuses, 
uh, lack of hitting milestones um, and a couple of other little problems. So it doesn't specifically say that Microsoft came in and, and sort of saved them, but it looks like that they have gone through some, some issues uh, along the way as well. Yeah, right. I was trying to think that they um... – I'm blanking on it, but we it, just of recent memory was Sony swooping in to save the PS5 version of Callisto Protocol, and I was just wondering if there was an epic save here because if uh, Bully, you can correct me on this, mate, but I believe the Xbox Series X version runs pretty well, but isn't the PlayStation 5 version pretty buggy? Uh, I'm not sure. I've been playing it on Game Pass, so... Oh, I um, thought you read an article. I thought you sent me a link to an article saying there was a few bugs on PS5. Oh, no, no. The, the article I sent you was uh, PowerPix, who normally do the um, trophy slash achievement guides, have basically thrown their hands up and said, um, just because of the collectibles and the way that the world's put together and the structure of it, um, that, that, that they've made a determination not to cover it and, and give you a run-through of how to get all the trophies on it purely for the fact is that they don't know how to write it properly because it's so disjointed in terms of the world. They're not saying the story's disjointed or the game's disjointed. They're just saying that the way the world's put together uh, is too hard for them to write a descriptive piece to be able to get the trophies. So that's that's what they were saying about the game is is to make it difficult for a got from a guide writing perspective. Oh, I see. I misunderstood. Sorry, my fault. Not reading things. Look at me go. <laughs> no, that's right. And we'll uh, just looking in the chat there. So we're talking about uh, how we think the the game's going to play out. Matt forty seven's just jumped in there and said that um, the Atomic Heart Soviet Union World Order. He says that. It crumbles. The robots are the ones that made the alt version work. With no robots, there's no successful Soviet Union. So no, no success in the game. So he thinks that the robots will crumble at some point uh, ah, in there. Skynet style. I love it. Mm, Very good. Yeah. Hey, Matt. Welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us in real time. All right, guys. It's over and to just, game. Oh, yeah, but go, mate. I was just going to say before we jump over to game two, Troy, do you want to do an active reload for me? Sure thing. Here we go, guys. Active reload. We will be right back when I find the button. All right, everybody, welcome back. It is now time for game two, and I'll hand it over to Bully. My friend, you've gone hands-on, eyes-on, into PSVR 2. Sir, tell me things. Oh, I've gone head into, I think, is probably ah, the headlong. best way to describe it. <laughs> Headlong into. Um, now, I know this, I know what your thoughts are, Troy, and I know roughly what uh, Unki's thoughts are, although... Having had discussions over the last two days, I reckon he's just about ready to crumble, to be honest. <laughs> and I'm, su I'm surprised we haven't got the box sitting on the uh, the shelf in the background. But um, yes, an expensive bit, bit of kit. Um, it, it costs more. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what it is exactly overseas comparable, but certainly in Australia, it costs more than the, the PS5 itself. So, um, you know, it's a significant outlay if, if, if you're looking at getting into it. And, and that's, I think we've discussed in the past, is probably one of the things that, uh, has hampered the the pre-sales and the pre-ordering. Uh, whether it continues to do that, I'm not sure. But there is actually a pretty good selection of games being released for it. Um, you know, on release day, yes, again, we've discussed that there's no um, PS VR 1 to 2 um, free conversions, although there is some. Um, you know, that's not across the board. So things like Moss Book 1 and 2, you have to uh, repurchase for the VR 2. Um, so there's little things like that, which again may put people off, but uh, jumped into it yesterday. Uh, the first one I jumped into was Horizon Call of the Mountain. And I have to say, um, it, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm probably not giving too much away here, but you, the first couple of minutes you're sitting in a canoe and, and traveling down a river and just seeing the, the, the water effects and uh, being able to look over the side of the canoe and up through the jungle. And then you start seeing some of the, um, the robots and stuff that, you know, there's the, uh, the tall neck and the glint wing and 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 stuff like that, and then you start seeing some of the, um, I guess the non-aggressive uh, ones like the uh, I can't remember the actual in-game name tall from but the, tall neck. the the deer type ones. Oh yeah, nah. <laughs> can't remember that saying right here, but uh, you start seeing them sort of wandering around, and it's absolutely amazing. And then you sort of get into the game proper. Um, the way they've done the combat is is pretty good, I think. So you've got. Uh, obviously, your bow and arrow as you do in the, the normal Horizon games, but you sort of have to reach over your back shoulder and touch one of the buttons on the controller to draw a, an arrow and put it in your bow, and then you've got to draw back and, and aim. So um, it's an interesting way that they've sort of done it. it 
and I've probably what have I put probably two or three hours into that. Um, you start to get to points where you've got to creep around areas, um, avoiding uh, some of the more aggressive robots, which is interesting in and of itself. You know, it's not something I've seen in a VR before where you've sort of uh, you got to manoeuvre yourself around an environment and hide behind things to, to avoid being spotted. And then quickly, you, you almost find yourself panicking to a I, degree when you've, you've got to start climbing to a certain area and you go, oh, I've only got a certain amount of time. So you start sort of, you know, really uh, throwing your arms around trying to get up to the next to the next section. So uh, really enjoyed that. I think that the game's about eight, eight or nine hours long, um, depending on how you sort of play it. But um, the only thing I sort of found, and uh, I reckon after about... 40 minutes to an hour um, of sort of because it's a very vertical game that you're going up and down and, and that sort of stuff that I, I found myself not becoming, you know, motion sick or anything like that, but just sort of getting to the point where I go, oh, I've got to put this down for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes and just have a break and just sort of recalibrate myself a little bit before you jump back into it, which is, again, probably not a bad thing. It extends the life of it out. Can I ask um, on that point, mate? Just yeah, are there yeah. any other previous VR titles that you've had that same experience with, or is this new to this? Uh, I think occasionally you've sort of had um, when I first started with the, the VR one, when you're sort of getting used to how it all works and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, you, you sort of get over that a little bit and it, it may happen with this, but I think it was just more the verticality of it. And I'm not great with, with heights anyway. So that probably doesn't, um, assist with it when you're standing up the top of a rocky ledge and you you know you want to see everything around the world so you start going oh let's peek over the side so that probably doesn't help <laughs> either um, but the fact that it's a it's it's very it's you, you're still very much moving in the same or similar manner that you would in the normal horizon games you, you're still moving your character forward you're still you know um you, it's in first person obviously because it's vr but you're still scrambling up walls and around corners and and you know under barriers and, and jumping over things so you've still got a lot of movement in there so that's not something that i've experienced a lot of with any of the the vr that i've played so um you know again it might be just something you get used to I, I certainly yeah i was just gonna ask are you playing this standing up or are you just playing it seated uh, I've been, just been playing it seated for the time being, but um, I was going to talk about um, Resi 8. So Resident Evil 8's got the VR mode in it that I downloaded as well and jumped into that tonight. And I didn't have any of those issues with, um, you know, feeling that motion sickness and I played through that for probably about an hour. Um, can, I, can I jump in and just ask about the headset? How does it feel on the head compared to PSVR 1? Uh, I, I think it's... Once you've sort of worked out on your on your head where you're going to get the best vision from because uh, that's the only thing i found in terms of trying to get the right vision so it's not blurry inside your eyes once you sort of get to that then you can start readjusting the, the rest of the headpiece and all the rest of it and I, I haven't found an issue with it's not too weighty uh you don't sit there after half an hour and you've got a stiff neck or anything like that um the only issue i sort of had is the way i've got mine um system set up is i've got the the PlayStation itself uh, on the left of the TV, and then you've got the one cord, which I can tell you, coming from the original one where you've got, you know, I think it was ended up being three or four cords coming out of that yeah. system and plugged into all different things and the, the separate box and all the rest of it. You've got one plug that goes into the front of the um, PS5 itself and, a, and a, I think it's about a four or five metre cord, so it's a fairly lengthy cord on it. But the only issue is it goes into the back of the headset. So uh. you sort of find yourself, if you've, got your system in front of you near the TV, that that cord then has to then run around behind you somewhere to get up into the back of the headset. And there was the odd occasion that I'd sort of, you'd be doing something or mo because you're moving, you're dislodged where the cord was and you sort of got to, you know, swipe it back behind you. So that's can the I only thing a, I found, but the, yeah. Can I offer a tip from PC VR? Uh, I know exactly what you're saying about the cable and it is annoying. Uh, what I found in the PC VR is it's best to stand with my back to the computer. So for you, it'd be weird. You're standing with your back to your home entertainment system. But if you do that and then reset the camera so it thinks you're facing forward like the monitor normally, but you're actually sitting backwards, that eliminated 80%, I would say, of the cord issues for me on the PC. Yeah, so the, the only thing with that, and I'm not sure with, because I, uh, other than the 20 minutes I've spent on Alex um, at your house, Troy, um, 
I'm not sure whether any of the, the other VR systems have this, but there's a button on the front of the um, headset that you can basically um, see what's coming out of that camera. So you can yeah. shut off the vision of the game itself and you can then see around what's around you and yep. and that sort of stuff, which I take on board what you're saying, but if you're not looking at the TV, and it, you, I mean, you can just rotate yourself back around, I suppose, but if, if you're wanting to get out of the game or go into a menu or shut things down or whatever it is or see who's around you, you push that button on the, on the front of your your headset there and you can then just see the TV as per normal and you can see around you as per normal. So that Can I um, ask, is that vision in colour or is it like a weird sort of grayscale? Uh, it's sort of grayscale. Um, yeah, the, I'm blanking on the name now, but that's been a feature on the Valve, uh, you know, the, yeah, Valve headsets, the window. And the medical ones, Chris, heads are the same thing. If you step outside the the safety barrier, you'll see black and white of just the world, which I think is a great thing that PS Valve One didn't have sort of, yeah, constantly walking into shit. Yeah, I'm just blanking on. I, it's driving me crazy because the Steam like had a proprietary name for that system, and I'm it's gone. It doesn't matter. And now, now fully, we're seeing we're seeing images of the um, controllers coming up on the screen, and they look massive. Or is that girl got really small hands? Or have you got the controllers there? You can show us, or are they too? Uh, you give me two seconds, and I can. But the the um, I think the girl's got pretty small hands. To be honest with you, <laughs> um, they they're not. They're not that small. Uh, sorry, they're not that big that you know that you feel dwarfed inside them, or you can't find buttons or whatever. They're actually a really good size. They're fairly yeah, okay. intuitive in terms of you've got the triggers on each one, plus you've got the um, you've you've basically got one on the side as well, plus you've got your your normal face buttons you have on a on a dual sense controller, but they're just split across the two. So you've got a stick on each one. You've got you know, the X and Y and, and circle and square, but they're split between the two controllers and, and that sort of stuff. So, um, can I ask on the they, build quality? Oh, sorry, mate. Go. I was just going to say they're actually, um, that they're actually really comfortable to hold. You don't really feel like you're, they're, they're quite light. Um, are they balanced? Uh, yeah, I have an issue with it where you sort of feel like your, your hands are dipping or you you know, you're feeling uncomfortable with them. They're, they're light enough that you can, that you can put a, fair bit of play time into them without without getting sore same with the headset um once you sort of get yourself set up the whole thing um both the headset and the controllers uh really comfortable really intuitive um the only thing i sort of found jumping between call of the mountain and uh and resi 8 was that the call of the mountain uses the triggers to pick things up whereas resi 8 uses the the side button on the mm. on the stick so you sort of found yourself sort of trying to do the triggers and then going, oh, what, what's going on here? And then, oh, hang on. So that's the only thing. But that's just a game-by-game game thing. It's not the, they the, the system the itself. Controls? Are they just battery-powered? Uh, rechargeable. So Okay, nice. Um, they, one so, thing do I they did, come in like a dock that they sit in or for charging? Uh, well, you, you can buy the docks um, an extra 80 I think, for the charging dock. Um <laughs> Which I didn't get because I sort of thought oh, I'll see how we go with it and 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 work it out. So the only the only issue I found with it though, so it uses the exact same charger as the DualSense does, but it's uh, and forgive me for not knowing the the correct terminology or the or the technology behind it, but the 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 speed of the charge on the DualSense con- uh, charger. Uh, isn't enough to charge the the uh, PSVR two controllers. Mm-hmm. So the one that you get within the PSVR two box itself, you get one in there. You just have to rotate them around. I, I, I couldn't understand, but I was playing with it last night. I had them both plugged in and and trying to charge both at the same time, and only the one with the actual charger was charging properly from from the actual um, set itself. So I would. Uh... Um, I would suggest maybe trying a powered USB, like a four-port powered oh, mate, USB I'd, hub, and they'd probably zing in, I reckon. I tried it on four or five different USB setups. So, Oh, wow. Um, I don't know if it's just me. It might be just me. I'm a bit of a doofus sometimes when it comes to tech <laughs> stuff. but um, So it may just be me, but as I said, I tried it on four or five different USB ports, switched them around um, while I was trying them as well, and it just seemed to work that way. I think eventually I'll, I'll end up just getting the. I oh know it's an expensive 
um, thing to just charge your controllers, but just to have it sitting up on a shelf, having both seated in there and you don't really have to worry about it. I think eventually I'll go, I'll go down that line and, and get those. But um, I mean, t- overall in terms of um, experience, I reckon it's fantastic. I, I've never, I've, as I said, I haven't really put any time into the, to the meta quest or the, um, or the, uh, the other PC one. Um, I've only really put put a bit of time into the PSVR one, but from what I've seen, it's it's fantastic. Um, you I, you just sort of get, got to get to that point where you you need to accept the price or wait for a price drop and then see what comes with the games. But as I said, I, I watched a um, I watched a, a video the other day that had a hundred plus you know releases coming out for the VR two over the next sort of six to twelve months with about twenty or twenty five coming out on release date so th- there's plenty of support there and there, there's there's stuff to play it's not like you're left languishing with with nothing you know psv to style so well you might have um, said this already did it come with a demo disc or anything uh no demo disc um so essentially you're paying you're paying for the system you, you walk home and then you've got to outlay again so if, if you got the call of the wild bundle pack uh, you get the game for a bit cheaper with that but it's a download code only there's no physical release other than that it's from what I've seen, there's no currently no physical releases for any any games, which is mm-hmm. very hard for me to swallow. But <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it looks like it's just going to be digital um, for the most part at this stage. So um, the, the only issue I have with that is, to, is, is sorry, is that fast way to chew up your uh, hard drive space if you start downloading a whole bunch of VR titles on your PS5. Oh, there's that, and the, the, this is always the inherent issue I have with digital downloads. Is Sony. Um, set the price on it and they've got there's no competition for it so yeah that they have no real incentive to release them on any of the ps plus tiers they've got no incentive to reduce the price because the reality is no other system has these games uh, and you can't get them in a physical capacity or in any other way so they've really got the market by the um short and curlies really and there's not much we can do about it other than just hope sorry mate other than just hope that they they drop the price at some point, but you know we'll see how that goes. I'd be very interested to see, Billy, if there's any uh, parallels with like Steam VR titles. If they're the same games, I'm saying on PS5 and Steam VR, I'd love to know that sort of average price difference. A uh, couple of questions from me. First one: If your kids were using it, didn't put the straps on, and let one of the controllers go flying into the wall, how do you think it'd go? Uh, well, I'd both. Uh, or two of the, my two eldest kids had a bit of a, a bit of a go at it last night. I let them have you know sort of three or four minutes of playing around with it, um, and that was the first thing that so happened generous. Was, that, was that strap went. Well, hey, I'm just going by the guidelines. The guidelines say <laughs> can't play until you're over twelve, <laughs> so I'm doing them a favour. <laughs> uh, but that was the first thing I did was strap on that uh, strap on the uh, the wrist strap. You know, they, they they're pretty pretty good with. With video games and and that sort of stuff, they um, you know, they're not they, they played Wii stuff in the past. They're not going to go throwing the controller at the TV, but oh, by the same t- by the same token, I don't want the risk, so the wrist strap goes on. Yeah, mate, I'm just daydreaming about the day I can afford a PSVR too. And I know my boys like they're pretty familiar with VR. They've done a lot of PC and uh, PlayStation VR one, and I can't tell you how many times they haven't put the straps on. The controllers have gone flying. So <laughs> at some point in the future, I guess I'll find that one out. My second question for you, man, was you wear glasses to the audio listeners out there. Hi, welcome. Uh, you can't see that Bully actually wears glasses. So do the glasses stay on in the PSVR too? And what's that experience like? Uh, yeah, there's plenty of room for the glasses. Uh, funnily enough, though, so the way my eyesight is, it's sort of middle distance. So if you if you're sitting at a anything more than basically a computer screen away is when my eyes start to, to unfocus. So um, I tried it with the glasses on. There's plenty of room in there, um, but I just found it easier just to get a focus on the screen without the glasses, just because of the way my eyesight is. So mm-hmm. I I tried it for about five minutes or so I've taken them off and haven't needed them since. So um, I guess it'd just be a case by case basis, whether you need them while you're playing it or because that um, vision quality is, is pretty good and it's right up on your eyesight that might alleviate the need for, for a lot of people to, to be wearing glasses, but certainly you can. Yeah. Cool. Uh, no other questions from me off the top of my head. Anki, any from you, mate? Nah, you may send me one sooner rather than later though. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> 
And uh, sorry, Billy, have you sort of had a forecast look at the next sort of six, 12 months of releases? Is there anything for PSVR 2 that you're red hot waiting for? Um, well, no, without going too much into it, because I think it's a news story later on, but uh, Resi 4 um, is one that I'm certainly looking forward to. Um, and even um, it, the, there is a fair bit coming out, but I, I'm keen to also to get back into um, the two Moss games. I played the the first one on the VR one, um, probably only for an hour or two, but a phenomenal um, game. Yeah, so that and with the with with the VR two setup, it's um, they've they've got enhanced visuals and and uh, enhanced controls. And one feature that I haven't spoken about is the eye tracking. That is unbelievable. I don't know. Do, does the Meta and the 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 PC versions have eye tracking on them? No. Um, so essentially when you're setting it up for the first time, it, it gets you to look around all these dots on the screen and that sets it up for the, for basically you only need to do it once. When you then get into the games, if you're looking at a menu, for instance, and call of the mountain, you don't have to move your controller. You don't have to move your headset. You just have to look at the menu item that you want to select and it moves the cursor to it automatically. That's wild. It, do different users have to go through the same collaboration, uh, process calibration uh, I, process sorry no i think it once it's calibrated um it's essentially done uh, i obviously the, the kids have only had a little bit of a turn at it so i haven't been able to test that properly but um the tech itself is is absolutely unbelievable to the point with um with the resi 8 um when i was playing that and you can pull out your flashlight and turn your flashlight on where you look on the screen you can have your, your head, headset still, but where you look on the screen is where your torchlight goes. That's wild. Uh, so if you look down at the green because you think you see something, your torchlight goes down at the green. You look up at the sky, the, it looks up at the sky. Oh, uh, absolutely amazing bit of tech. And the first time that you sort of realise what you're doing with your eyes, it sort of freaks you out a little bit because you, you I've never seen anything like it. And it's it, it works well for for what they put in there. And, again, we talk about the the – the price of it, but the the tech that they've jammed in there, I, I think, is amazing. I think yeah. that's what I'm more it's most excited about is the tech and where this can go sort of in the future. Because at the moment, I think there's not many things that you can't get on other devices. I know Oculus came out and congratulated Sony on the release of PSVR 2, but that was at the start of their whatever they said. And then right in the middle, like, ah, oh, just so you know, you can get 42 of the 49 games coming to PSVR 2 on our platform and then went back to the <laughs> and so it was a solid little flex there to say that they've got just as many games as PS2. So but no it's good to hear that the tech is there and that I'd like to see where developers go with it. I just hope developers support it. Well that'll all be driven by the number of units they sell. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah but points? I suppose uh, I was just gonna say I suppose in wrap up if you if you've got the money for it um, lying around, which not everyone has. I get that, you know, the world's in a bit of a financial stress at the moment and, and some people are doing it hard. I, I understand that. Um, if you do have the money for it, the spare the spare coin, and it's something that does interest you as well, well worth the investment from what I've seen. Um, as, as mentioned, the tech's there. Um, from what I can see, the support's going to be there, at least in the short to midterm, whether that ends up being a long-term thing. Um, I guess we'll wait and see, but uh, certainly a couple of big thumbs up for me. Fantastic. I love it. Any guess as to how my arthritis would go with those triggers, though? Is it the exact same feel as the dual sense? Uh, no, easier. Easier trigger pull. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. That's exciting. Uh, Anki, with no final points from you, mate, we'll move on. Move it on. All right, then. Uh, game three this evening on screen. You can see two versions of Bully, but just one of me because my camera can't handle the heat. Uh, this was Bully and I playing over the weekend, a bit of PGA Tour 2K23. Uh, and if you look on the right-hand side there, just above my head, uh, I'm using the three-button press because I learned that back in 2001, I think, on the original uh, Xbox. And it's the only way that golf games make sense to me. But Bully, what was your input mechanism? Uh, so I use the right stick, uh, pull back on the right stick to pull your club back and then flick it forward um, to do the downswing and, and make contact with the ball. And how yeah, did you find that? It's the, only, it's the only way to play. 
<laughs> real gamer. Hashtag real gamer. Uh, but I'm so impressed by this game. The first thing I'll shout out is the seamless way the multiplayer works. And I don't know if you've ever tried to do a multiplayer golf game, Unky, but it lets you both go at the same time. So I could be sitting there lined up for oh. a putt. And you'll see Bully's ball just come in from the side. It's there visually, but the balls can intersect and there's no physics uh, bouncing off them or anything. But there you go. There's a shot, Bully, coming in onto the backside of the green. So it's really incredibly fast way to play golf. We got through, uh, what, 18 holes in 40-ish minutes, Bully? Uh, yeah, with a bit of mucking around. I reckon if you just jumped straight into the game and went through, you'd, you'd knock over the 18 holes in, in about half an hour, I would have thought. Yeah, and a uh, solid gameplay experience. I absolutely love it. This is hands down the best golf game, golf experience I've ever had in the simulated world. How about you, Billy? How does it sit uh, in the pantheon of golf games? Uh, well, I, I have to say I was that impressed. So when we played it the other day and did the multiplayer, um, I just downloaded the demo, which you can get through the PS Plus. Um, I was that impressed with it. I, I jumped onto uh, my most hated of all delivery services, Amazon, because <laughs> uh, they were the cheapest by a long shot. Uh, got it for 29 Australian dollars. Uh, had it shipped, uh, ordered it Sunday afternoon, and it arrived this morning. So not too bad for Amazon, I suppose, but it wasn't a new release. Nobody else wants it, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Bloody beauty. But, yeah, 100%. I reckon it's fantastic. Uh, as you said, I was a bit shocked with that um, with that multiplayer when we started playing it, I, I saw you tee off and I thought, oh, I'll just wait for you yeah. to have your shot and your three three shots and on the green and I'm still standing in the tee box uh, <laughs> not realising that we're actually playing here. <laughs> and now, Bully, into that uh, $23 equation for you, does that include the $10 you got off me for the uh, 18 holes we played? No, I'm waiting for you to, I'm waiting for you to pay me back. That'll make the, the, the uh, price of the game even cheaper for me. Beautiful. Cash in hand next time I see you, mate. Um, <laughs> I absolutely love it. I've gone a little bit of the career mode. I set it to easy, believe it or not, and I'm still getting my teeth kicked in. Believe you looked at the career mode at all? Uh, no, I haven't only because of that. Um, I think it was two hours was the um, yes was the trial version that you got through PS Plus and, you know, just was bad luck this week with, with not being able to time up, but I was sort of holding out that we'd be able to do another game. Uh, at some point on that trial, but it doesn't matter now. Of well, I suppose it's just bad timing. Though it's sitting up on the shelf, staring at me while the PSVR headsets also staring at me. So it might have to wait a couple <laughs> of days. But uh, I'll certainly jump back into it. Um, if nothing else, I, I wouldn't mind having a look at the career mode and see what's in there. But 100%, I'd be back in the in the uh, multiplayer in a heartbeat. It's you know, it's it's almost a bit of mindless fun, and you can joke around while you're doing it. You can see yeah. the other person and how they're playing, and you can sort of um, you know, it's good for a bit of a bit of banter, and it's almost as close as you can get to the old couch co-op style yeah. uh, gameplay, in my opinion, because you can see someone miss a shot, and you can you can razz them a little bit, and and then line up for your shot and miss it, and then you cop it back, and yeah, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I absolutely love it. It's a pretty standard fare on offer, you know, career mode. There's custom creator, all that sort of stuff. Create your own character, go through a career, or just pick up and play any course you want that's not hidden behind any sort of progress markers or anything. You can just off the bat go to any course, all the popular ones, obviously. Um, I think it's a fantastic golf game. If you're into golf games, check it out. As Bully said, it's uh, available as a PS Plus trial if you're a higher tier subscriber. Um Two big thumbs up from me. I love it. And uh, yes, Bully, anytime you're ready for some multiplayer, this game is not getting deleted off my PS5 anytime soon. I'm loving it. Silly. Unky. I, think, any I reckon thoughts? the only oh. thing that uh, the only thing that might stop you playing it is uh, me draining your wallet out, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all right. My missus put a stop to that already. <laughs> <laughs> Unky, any thoughts from your side, mate? No, no, the main golf games I've played are Everybody's Golf, which I absolutely loved, um, and Mario Golf as well, which is sort of not as good as Everybody's Golf. But um, no, this looks like fun, and I really enjoy, you know, what you've said about the, the multiplayer stuff. I think that's a great way to deal with multiplayer golf games, especially like waiting for someone to take their turn can be tedious and not fun and draw games out way longer than they need to. So I think that's a great feature, and yeah, it makes multiplayer games way more fun. I couldn't believe it. I checked out your stream the other day, and you guys are almost finished or just finished like nine holes. And I was like, hang on a second, the stream's barely been running. How are they doing this so quick? And that explains it all. Beautiful, mate. Well, you've got a two-hour trial as well, buddy. So anytime you want to install it, let me know. I'll happily go another 18 holes. All right, awesome. then. Game four, Unky Dunky, over to you, sir, for some Metroid Prime Remastered action. 
Yeah, so I jumped into this one sort of on day dot when it got announced and then shadow dropped um, after that Nintendo Direct we had so a week ago, I think it was. Can um, I and just it, jump in for one second? I've got yeah. a bone to pick with the phrase shadow dropped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't it just ridiculous? It's stealth drop. It's always been stealth drop. I don't know why they changed to shadow drop. Shadow drop makes me think of like Batman fighting an enemy. <laughs> but stealth drop is like it came out of nowhere, but everyone can see it. I I just think linguistically it's silly to call it a shadow drop because that <laughs> sounds like it should be dropping to no fanfare and no one noticing, in my opinion. Sorry, Anki, total derailment. Back to you. No, that's fine. They both start with S, so, you know, I can see the confusion. Uh, no, it just I, I've played a lot more of this game now, and I found myself this last week without too much time to play games, like not really wanting to get sucked too much in. Like, I sort of put Hogwarts to the side a little bit just because I wasn't feel like being deeply immersed and, you know, I didn't have too much time. But when I play something like that, I want a bit more time. But I sort of just jumped into my Nintendo a bit this week, and it was sort of I was jumping back and forth between playing Metroid and a, a bit of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but I just got hooked on Metroid. Like, I never made it this far playing Prime back in the day because I reckon I was too young and actually too stupid to figure out actually where I was going because <laughs> it's the way, the way the exploration works, and that's what I found this game so fun now is, is actually sort of working out what levels and where you need to go and how you're going to get there. So I just think it's got like a perfect, you know, it's got a perfect balance between like the action progression, like exploration. It's blended perfectly in this game and the way they like, you know, just drip feed you um, abilities and stuff that you're finding throughout the world to then get you to the next part of the level and just the mystery. There's not much, you know, dialogue going on, but that adds to the mystery and the atmosphere of the game and everything sort of just feels wet, which is kind of sounds disgusting, but it's just it's just thick and it just feels really cool to be in this world and mysterious and the combat's really fun. Like it kind of reminds me of, you know, it's it's kind of doing Dark Souls things where you've, Ooh. you know, you're in these, yeah, like this, it's, it's hard to... Well, it's not really hard to explain, but like you've got these sort of little biome areas that you're going to and you're trying to get to these safe areas. Once you go to a safe area and save, all the enemies respawn. So you've got to kind of sometimes do you push on further with like knowing that you've killed some and cleared out enemies in a certain area um, or do you need to go and save and you know restore your health and restore all your missiles because sometimes you're doing areas which require you to use your missiles as a part of a puzzle and if you don't have enough, and you actually need to walk out of that room. And by the time you walk out of that room, that's reset that room. So you can't just like go get a couple of missiles, come back. You actually have to prepare for that room and prepare for the puzzle. And I'm having so much fun figuring out sort of these rooms and where I have to go. And if you, I, I did realize that if you, the game realizes that you don't know where to go, it will throw up a very subtle hint on the map about a little question mark. It, you, map, you, know, you haven't even brought this part on your map yet. It's just a little question mark on a black area in you know slightly where the map is that you've already Sonic unlocked Frontier it. style. Kind of. You've just got to kind of figure out how to get there. And with your new abilities, you will eventually get there. But it's just fun about the exploration. It's not holding your hand in a good way. I think a lot of games these days do like to hold your hand and give you a cursor about where to go. Um, but be, between Breath of the Wild and Metroid Prime, I can see where, you know, Nintendo has made their money in these franchises and why they score so highly on Medicare because they just... They just trust the gamer to play the game and figure things out on their own without being, you know, stupidly hard for the sake of being hard. It's just, it does, yeah, it, it treats you like an adult gamer. As it, I said, I, I couldn't finish this game or get anywhere near where I was as a child. And I think back when I was playing it, I don't know if we had, you know, walkthroughs quite like the way we do today. But <laughs> I think I said uh, last week that I got stuck and had to use a walkthrough, but... Um, ever since I sort of read a review that you know gave this game a 10 out of 10 and they said it was all about the exploration stuff, that's what made me go back and just start trying to play the game like this and trying to figure out the puzzle and trying to figure out the world. And that's where I found the fun. So, no, just a quality game. I can see why it scores the way it does and why it's renowned as one of the best um, first-person experiences going around and one of the best Metroids ever made. Nice. Uh, a couple of questions. The first one is, what's the save system like? You said sort of you can bone yourself maybe if you go into the room underprepared and have to go back. Are you in a position where you can just hit save before you cross the threshold or is there bonfire checkpoint style? No, it's kind of bonfire. You, like, you find rooms and like sometimes they might not be off to the hidden path. You might have to you, you know, go into ball form and get underneath to find a safe area. Um, but if you do find certain areas, they will unlock the map and you'll be able to see where these safe areas are designated by a big S on the map. Mm -hmm. um, so you are go they, into these things. Are yep. they generously spaced? Are there enough of them? No, there's enough. Absolutely, there's enough of them. They're sort of nicely spaced enough that you got a lot of a fair bit of gameplay and risk out your raise reward sometimes. So you got to sort of you know make your choice about what you're going to do sometimes. But I've never felt unfairly done by when yep. it comes to either me dying or pushing on too far. Like there was one time where I was getting down to like you know almost no health at all. And I had to play it really sort of stealthily to get through or rush through rooms where I knew there were enemies. And it was exhilarating. Like, and, and I didn't die. I got through it. And there's 
you know, abilities to unlock extra health in the game, which I've done now, they're all off the beaten path as well. And you've got to look for secret rooms to get, you know, to be, I can hold up to, I think you start with 10 missiles in the game and I can hold up to 50 now. Um, oh. You start with like three lots of one, maybe even less, two lots of 100 for your health. And then you unlock different vials that give you more. So I'm up to about six different vials of 100 health. So um, yeah, it's, it's it's really good gameplay and really good systems working together to create such a you know a wholesome experience that I've just absolutely loved this week. If it uh, wasn't called remastered and you were new to the video gaming landscape, would you think this was a brand new release? Is it modern yep. in all the trimmings? Yep, and that's what's amazing about it. It's this game being as old as it is holds up so well that you would literally think this was a modern game. That's wild. I love it. Has there been any talk on uh, sales numbers for it? How's it tracking? I haven't seen sales numbers yet. I know it's only digital at the moment. I was, Billy was saying just before that his hard copy's on the way. I think it was supposed to be initially the 22nd of Feb, but I think he says like 3rd of March now for the physical version. So once that comes out, I think you'll see a lot more sales, but I haven't seen the numbers on the digital sales just yet. Wild. Um, no further questions from me, Bully. Any from you, mate? Oh, he's fallen back into a VR hole. He's not oh, with oh, us. He's, got, he's got the VR headset on. You everyone say goodbye to Bully. He's done for the night. <laughs> Maybe he'll come back and rejoin us. If I move us on to game five, uh, which is Pinball Effects. Now, I was absolutely blown away. This one took me by complete surprise. Uh, it was Stealth Dropped. That's right, Stealth Dropped on Friday. <laughs> um, a free to play on PlayStation 5. Uh, Xbox Series X, S and X, Switch has got a copy, PC's got a copy through Epic Game Store. Uh, free, but just one table. But my God, what a game. Are you fellas old school pinball, virtual pinball people? Oh, nope. <laughs> so this one only speaks to me then. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> the slightest. <laughs> That's wild. Well, in that case, I'll keep it brief. I absolutely love this game. I love pinball games. Um you, I wish you blokes had given it a try just for the haptic feedbacks. The PS5 specifically, the way they've done the DualSense. And, oh, that, yeah, interesting to note, the DualSense, I keep wanting to call it the DualSense 5, the DualSense feels instant and perfect the way the triggers are implemented to pull the, you know, the, what do you call them, paddles on the table? I don't know. Um, but on the Xbox Series X, there is noticeable lag. Like, I'm talking maybe 30 milliseconds, but it's just enough to really throw your timing when you're trying to, you know, time out to land on a specific ramp or whatever. So uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the Xbox version of this game. It needs a patch. The controller, uh, there's just noticeable lag on the input, which is crazy to me. It looks better on the Xbox, but that controller input being off is uh, insane. Each table, as I said, they only get one for free, but it's got eight game modes apiece. Uh, the arcade mode is by far the funnest. You can set your modifiers up. And if you look at that, you set it to give you skill shots. So off the bat, you can launch the ball and be straight into a 4 or $6 million run, uh, not dollars, point run. Uh, absolutely phenomenal implementation. I love it. They've got an interesting business model. I'm not sure how it's going to go for them, but they've got, now I'm blanking on the number. I'm going to go out and live and say about 26 tables that you can pay for uh there some of them are bundled together like i think you can get all the star wars ones together and half of the uh marvel tables that sort of stuff they're on screen there now the big layout of tables every table has a trial though so you can download and play it in arcade mode for two minutes before the table resets so you can check them out before you buy but the big sort of thing they've got going is essentially a battle pass but it's a 30-day subscription for a it was $22 on the Xbox for the 30-day subscription. With that subscription, you get all but two of the tables unlocked for the 30 days. So it's a very interesting way to go. I'm just not in a position to be dropping $22 for a bunch of tables. But uh, And you can see it here running, excuse me, on the Xbox. But what you saw first with PlayStation 5, this is the Xbox version. I just think it looks a bit better. Uh, but that's about it for me. Oh, there is, sorry, a couch co-op mode. So if you've got young kids, you can put it into like a pass the controller and it's life about, uh, which is a lot of fun for couch co-op. Any questions, fellas, or should we move along? Nah, move along. Very good. Look out behind you, Unky. Um, <laughs> moving on to game six. Oh, and it's you, Unky. It's not a game at all. It's a TV show. I'll explain to everyone. Once again, this week, we are using the footage from the PlayStation 5 remaster of The Last of Us Part 1. But the HBO characters on the front because we are, in fact, talking about the HBO show, specifically episode six. Over to you, Anki. 
Yeah, episode six. So just like we talked about last week, this show gives us something different to talk about each week in relation to what happened. This one, not so much happening in relation to characters per se. There's nothing big really that happens up until well, the final part of the episode. But this episode for me, I think the most standout thing was the vistas, the way it was shot, the grand scale of where they were. It was just beautiful to watch. I just think the way they showed them walking through the different terrains in this episode, it was just a sight to behold. I think if this uh, this episode had a photo mode, this is where I'd be using it because it was just beautiful. <laughs> Um, although I have seen, uh, it was on Twitter somewhere that um, on the wide shot when they're walking across the um, the bridge, you can actually see some of the crew <laughs> hiding in the bushes uh, oh, to, the far, to the far left. So I haven't gone back to watch the episode to see if I can see it myself, but I have seen the photos. Um, but no, this was another great episode for Joel and Ellie and their relationship uh, building. It, um, it's probably had, for me, the biggest and best change that we've seen from the game, I think. Um, when they walked into Jackson, um, instead of the dam, the dam was in it, but um, then they were sort of taken back to Jackson. I think this is the best change this story probably could have made. Um, and, and definitely, I think, better than the game because it establishes Jackson as this town before we sort of get to the end of the um, the season. And it's, it's establishing that town as a character in itself before we get there. So mm. it's giving us more time to breathe in that location. And I couldn't believe it I was seeing it because that came up and I'm like, oh, my God, that looks exactly like Jackson from Last of Us Part 2. They go to the hall, you see the fairy lights, I had tingles um, running down my eyes because I was like, they have nailed the way this town looks with the snow as well. We mentioned that winter has come early, like this part of the game's not set in winter at this point, um, but they've sort of moved that forward and changed the timeline a little bit. But um, had to call out, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys both saw it, the, um, the little Easter egg of, uh, of Dina uh, in the, inside the, uh, the mess hall there. Bully no, on your head. Me. No, so obviously Dina from Last of Us Part 2. Uh, obviously, I don't not too many spoilers, but she plays a major role in Last of Us Part 2. And, She's in Jackson and there's at one point in the show, Ellie looks over and sees a girl looking at her and then she sort of scampers away and asks who was that, um, foreshadowing Dina, obviously. And I think in Last was Part 2, the game, um, one of their conversations is actually about the first time she saw Ellie, she saw her in the mess hall stuffing her face with food. And at that point in time when she sees this female, Ellie's eating dinner and stuff in her face. So I dare say that is our first look at Dina. So Wild. good to see the in- introducing that sort of this early. And, and I really enjoy that. I think there was no point doing two locations being the dam sort of, you know, place where they were living and then moving into this place after. There was a, such a good change for the show and it just allowed the show to breathe a bit more in that area. Um, they obviously, you know, a bit far removed from the game where Ellie sort of does the whole runoff and you got to go find her and then they have that conversation. This It was sort of more of a... Um, mellow sort of conversation between Joel and and Tommy, which I just think this is what they paid Pedro Pascal the big bucks for because him and uh, the bloke playing Tommy are just, you know, going hard in that scene where they're talking about Joel's, you know, troubles that he's having sleeping and he's, the heart stuff that's going on and he's feeling fear. And I think that's the first time we're seeing Joel have this attachment to Ellie where he actually feels like he's going to fail and that's causing him this anguish and, and he's never felt that way before. And I just think he sold that scene so well um, and obviously Ellie's obviously heard that conversation. I don't think they actually showed Ellie's hearing this conversation. He just sort of found her later. Um, and then they've had that absolute, you know, legendary scene where they're talking to each other about you don't know what loss is and all that kind of stuff. And that, again, I think that scene was absolutely nailed. Um, almost word for word. Yeah. Sorry, just on that scene, mate, I want to shout out this week the script writing because that scene was phenomenal. That was the high watermark for me. I absolutely loved it. You're right, man. The way it was acted was beautiful. I love the way it was shot. But it was the communication of Joel, like, essentially saying he hasn't let himself love anything in 20 years and now he has and now he's scared shitless because of it. It was just phenomenal. Such character building. So emotionally resonant. I just... Tip of the cap to him. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Sorry, mate. Back to you. No, that's right. And I just thought that was just such a nice touch. And to bring in the heart stuff to show that he's having a physical reaction to this kind of stuff, which I kind of thought they were leading us down sort of a different path with what was going to happen in the university. I thought maybe they're playing on the whole he's going to have a heart kind of issue. And that's but no, he obviously come the end of the episode. He's um, He still gets stabbed um, slightly differently to the game. But um, no, I just think they just sold those scenes so well. And the acting from these guys, I think the relationship between Joel and Ellie and the way those actors are communicating and connecting with each other, I think just brilliantly done. I think you can see the growth of those characters. Um, I think it's harder in a TV show like this where we're not playing Joel the whole time and being with Ellie the whole time. So 
I think in the game, I kind of felt like I had slightly more of a connection with Ellie than what he has with Ellie at this point in the story that we had in the game. But I think that merely is that we are role playing Joel in that game. So mm. we are like her father to Joel in that, in, oh, sorry, to Ellie in that point. Whereas the show, we're watching two other characters do it. So it's a little bit of a different feeling. It can feel a bit rushed if you have played the game. But um, I still think they're absolutely nailing this relationship. And I still think they're building very nicely towards that crescendo. Yeah, definitely. I love it. Um, had it lost it? Oh, did everyone like her purple jacket comment? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was an absolute high watermark for me. Bully, your thoughts on the episode? Um, there was parts of it I enjoyed, but I think for mine, taking some of those um, highlights away, I thought it was probably almost the weakest episode we've seen in terms of um, – what they were delivering and and i guess maybe it was that departure from uh the almost you know almost that scene for scene rundown of of what we've seen in the game and and Unky touched on it there where we you, yes we saw the dam but we didn't that's not where we met back up with tommy after we got past the dam it was we've gone to the full town sort of thing so that sort of took took for me a little bit away from it but but then by the same time once you step away and look at that and, and you can, and I agree with you you can sort of appreciate that a little bit Unky that they're setting it up for the next season um and then I suppose as I was watching it and I'm not going to give away um what's probably going to be coming up in the next episode but when they sort of showed that overshot of the town to start with I sort of thought have we jumped too far into the story um, or have we missed a whole section or are they redoing it a little bit? And it took me, you know, a minute or two of them, oh, no, hang on, this is Tommy and they're reuniting and, and all the rest of it. Um, so I was sort of sitting there thinking, well, have, have I missed an episode? And then I had to go back and check, am I watching the right one and what's going on and <laughs> and that sort of stuff. So for me, that that probably detracted from it a little bit. But um, I was talking to my wife today about it because she sat down and watched it. I think I mentioned last week that she, she'd really gotten into it. So she... She sat down and watched it today, um, and not did knowing. Did she watch it with you, or did she spoil it? Uh, no, I couldn't help myself the other day when <laughs> when she was still recovering in bed. I sat down and watched it. So she, I'll, I'll be honest, she was a bit dirty at me, but anyway, um, she she did sit down and watch it, not having known the story in the games. Um, she's taking it obviously in, in a lot of a different light than what I am. So. I'm always mindful when I'm watching it as a as a gamer and having been through this story that it's also got to appeal to a broader audience as well. Mm. Um, and I think if you take it from that perspective, I think what they're doing is actually appealing to a to that broader audience and bringing other people into the story. That yeah. if you went step by step, it almost um, you know if you went through that damn section. Oh, there we go. We've got a special guest on tonight. Uh, which isn't going to help because our video is down, but Unky's dog's jumped on his lap. So there you go. I'll give you the running uh, commentary on what we're seeing there. Our video's um, down? Sorry, what? Uh, the laggy. Oh, it's just laggy, oh. um, as we mentioned before. Um, the uh, Yeah, so what I was going to say is if, if you're watching it from, from an outsider's perspective, not having known what the story is, it would probably almost seem a bit janky if you did it step by step and if you i've sort of found if you take yourself out of um having those expectations as to where it's going to head um it's almost a little bit more enjoyable and that's i guess where i've got to sort of get in my head going forward um that, that there is going to be massive differences and you know some of the difference we have seen when we talk about um you know bill's town and that that episode that was obviously a massive departure from the from the game itself but Mm. expanding on the stories was something that I really enjoyed, which this episode really wasn't that. It wasn't an expansion of the story. It was just a different way of, of, of telling it, I guess. So yeah, um, it'd be interesting to see how much of that they do in the future and how much they can, um, they need to change things because they're, they're not going to fit as well doing as a play by play from the game. And I suppose the other, the other way to look at it as well in, in that respect is that, um, it, you know, People that know the story inside out and back to front, do they really want to sit there and just see a retelling of what they already know anyway? Um, so that's not. the other, yeah, and that's the other thing I sort of look at is if you're going to mix it up and and as Unky's mentioned, you know, you you throw a few little Easter eggs in there of um, 
things that people who know the story will know that's upcoming, but anyone else watching it sort of sits there and just sees someone flashing in the background, they don't really get that. So I, I guess it's just a, well, in summary, I suppose, it's just a change of mindset that I've almost got to have um, if this is the way they're going to do it going forward. But um, when I do say it's probably, in my opinion, the, the weaker of the episodes, I, I'd say that having uh, also saying that it's still a fantastic TV show and well worth a watch. So um, when you say it's the weakest of, uh, uh, that's a 9 out of 10, whereas all the others have been a 10 out of 10. So, you know, take it that way, I suppose. Fair enough. Yeah, and I think um, towards the end, I think it was a little bit rushed with the university stuff. I think they could have let that breathe a little bit longer. Um, but, I mean, I get why they did what they did and it's sort of it, they didn't need to be, you know, skulking around a university for you know, <laughs> 15 minutes like you would with more of a gameplay thing. But um, I think it was rushed a little tiny bit. I would like to see maybe some clickers or some stuff in there because I think this episode actually didn't have any of our infected at all. So... But that's also a testament to this show is that you can have a show about, you know, The Last of Us and, a pan, and you know, with zombies and no, have no zombies in an episode and still be a very good episode of TV. So I think that's a testament to it. I just hope, yeah, I know there's a lot of viewers out there that um, that do love the game and do want to see more of the um, the infected and stuff. So for them, I think we're still going to, they're going to ramp up. I think the way these shows ebbed and flowed um, throughout the whole season, I think um, they're pretty good at sort of giving us what we want when we want it and, letting the story breathe when it needs to breathe. Yeah, I reckon they're doing a great job on that front. A uh, question about the university, and uh, I'll try not to spoil the end of the episode, but one of the four blokes in the university who aren't Joel and Ellie, is one of them Troy Baker? I thought no. for a moment, I'm like, oh, was that it? No, nah, he's he's on. He's part of David's uh, crew. Ah, okay. I just got yeah. very excited. I wasn't sure. No, nah, he's, coming, he's coming up. <laughs> Oh, do you know the specifics? I thought it was a mystery. No, he's in the show, and I know, yeah, I'm 99% sure he's part of the David crew. Very good. Uh, any final thoughts from anyone, or shall we chug along? Uh, final thoughts, just this show just, yeah, is amazing so far. It has no right to be this good being a TV show based on a, a video game, but it's easily the best we've got so far. I love it. How would you feel if they did season or The Last of Us Part 3 as a TV series, not a video game first? Oh, don't, oh, do don't do it. <laughs> Give, us the game. Give us the game first. <laughs> Fully, any final thoughts, mate? No, I think it's pretty much said we can uh, move on. All right. Uh, moving on to Pure Hold'em. This is just a quick one from me. Uh, as we alluded to last week, they've added a lot more value to the PlayStation Plus upper tier. So I went and re-upped my subscription uh, to the top tier and included is uh, Pocus, Hold Pocus Hold'em? Nope. Pure hold them. Uh, check this out, guys. Once a day, you can play the high or low game for free. I don't know if you like it, but check out this run of cards that I have guessing here. I was very impressed with it. I think I got 18 grand or something off the back end for getting the high card, low card game right. Well, that was a lot of fun. But then it's an actual just Texas Hold'em simulator. You can play online. You can play in tournaments or you can play offline against AI bots only. Really quick and shout can, out. This game can is Can you phenomenal. play online though, Troy? Can you? Well, that's a great point, Bully and I did try to play online and we could not for the life of us work out how to get on the same table. I've played online with strangers, but no, to, to partner up with somebody, I couldn't work it out. Um, but that's for free, well, included in the high tiers. So if you're a Texas Hold'em fan uh, and you've got the high tiers, I say check it out. It's well worth it. Best implementation of poker I've seen. Uh, any questions, fellas, or should we jump straight along? Jump straight along. All right. Game eight this evening is Shadow Warrior 3. This one also recently added, recently added to Game Pass. Came out on, was it Thursday last week, I want to say? Uh, excellent game. I'd forgotten how good this series was. It's been a long time since I've played any Shadow Warriors, but it's just gameplay first all the way. So it's me down to the ground. It's an arcade first person shoot em slash beat em up. Uh, big fan of it. Unky, your thoughts? Yeah, I played this when it came out day one, so I paid money for it, unfortunately, which is uh, great, considering it's now on Game Pass and also upgraded for the Xbox Series X and S. Uh, but no, I haven't gone back and re-downloaded this just yet. I was actually 
more of a fan of number two, the way it went more Destiny loot style with the gameplay and stuff. This one literally is more like a Doom style game and it's still got the same wacky humour. Uh, is it Wo Long, Wo Fat, whatever his name is? I can't remember. <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> since I played it, but his quirky humour is still there. And yeah, I, I would like to, at some point when I've got some time, jump back into that and just see what it looks like running on the Series X. It runs flawlessly at uh, 60 frames a second. I'd love to know, Unky, how it looks at 120. And Bully, I want a number from you, man. What do you reckon? This FOV slide has been slid all the way to the right. It's maximum FOV. How many degrees of view do you reckon you see in here? Oh, I can't see it on, on the screen in front of me, but uh, oh, it's something resembling a couple of fish eyes, I would have thought. <laughs> 130 degrees, they win. The previous best. <laughs> Jesus. Was- Previous best was uh, Call of Duty last year at 120. They've outdone them by 10. 130 <laughs> degree field of view. I absolutely love it. It suits you, for me this high paced game perfectly. You'd almost be cross eyed at that point, wouldn't you? you know, no, just really go, excited but, and but, jumping but around. But going the wrong way. His <laughs> eyes are behind his ears at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing sneaks up on me. That's bloody brilliant. Uh, big fan of it. It's in Game Pass. And uh, I think I've put in, oh, I'm not sure between four and five hours at this point and it's just very generous with the achievements so if you're looking for some achievements uh this game is a great way to earn them nice and quick any final thoughts from you unky or bully no let's kick into newsroom doors troy all right then let me hit this button (laughs) who has the right to remain newsworthy this week unky First story from Video Games Chronicle is Zelda. Tears of the Kingdom leaks seemingly emerge from official art book. The book, which is included with the collector's edition, may contain spoilers. So this is more of a, you know, just letting everyone out there know there are spoilers out there. So be very careful what you are clicking on or reading in chats and stuff on YouTube and coverage of this game because there are leaks out there. If you don't want anything spoiled, be careful. Very good. Uh, I will be going in as cold as possible. How about you, Billy? Are you going to be running and hiding from these spoilers? Oh, I generally do with, with games that I'm excited about anyway. I pretty much try and go as dark as I can before they come out, and, and uh, this will be no exception, I would have thought. Very good. Are we moving on to story two then? Move on. That was just a PSA for everyone out there. Nice work, mate. Thank you. We are the Gaming Enforcement Agency. We do have to look out for everyone out there. That's story right. Story two is on screen, mate. This one's exciting for us. I haven't checked the Australian time for this one. Some of you might be able to tell me, but PlayStation's State of Play returns this week with PSVR 2 11 and Suicide. Tomorrow. Perfect, perfect. I will be watching live, hopefully, uh, with PSVR 2 and Suicide Squad reveals. The showcase will be held on Thursday, everywhere else, and focus on third-party games. So I'm pretty excited. This. We haven't seen a lot of gameplay footage on the Suicide Squad. Um I'm hoping this makes me more optimistic for the game than what the last thing was that sort of came out. It looked like it had a whole bunch of, uh, I wouldn't say microtransactions, but it had the, the, not the game pass, what do they call it, the battle pass sort of system working with it. So hopefully this just shows us some raw gameplay footage and what this game actually looks like. I still have the opinion that I would probably prefer to play as the Justice League than the Suicide Squad, even though we're going up against them. But uh, no, hopefully that footage is great. And there's mention of uh, PSVR 2 titles as well. So I'm also quietly optimistic and really hoping that we're going to get some Half-Life Alex reveal for PSVR 2. And if that happens, you bet your ass I've got a PSVR 2 by next Thursday. I've got a tinfoil hat here if you're ready. Go by for it. Thurs- it on. By next Thursday, 11 by 9.05 tomorrow morning. No, you're probably right about that too. Uh, it Sorry, Bully, it'll be after 11, after I've watched the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it won't be Half-Life Alex, unfortunately. Spoiler alert. Uh, my tinfoil hat has predicting the Beat Saber 2 stealth release. That's right. It's a stealth release. 11 a.m. tomorrow. They're gonna shadow drop. The not, the, not the shadow drop. Of Beat Correct. Saber. It won't be a shadow drop. There will be a lot of fanfare. <laughs> Everyone will know when it happens. And it'll be Beat Saber coming to PSVR 2 uh, tomorrow. My big question to you boys is PSVR going to see PSVR 2 excuse me going to see Beat Saber as a free game will it be a paid upgrade or will you just be buying at full price from the store what do you think no nah, to be honest I don't even want to see them announce Beat Saber at this thing like it's really what's on everything else play it somewhere else like if you get your PSVR 2 you're not getting it to play Beat Saber we want to see what these new things are what the studios are bringing us I want to see all the new stuff it's this showcase is giving us 16 brand new PS2 titles or sorry PS2 PS5 titles along with VR. So I want to see that stuff. If they tell me Beat Saber is coming out of PSVR 2, that doesn't get me excited at all. What about you, Bully? 
Um, not sure. I don't reckon that's one of the games that I've I've never played it on the original VR, and I know there's quite a few people rave about, but I don't think it's um, entirely high on my list. So even if they did announce it and stealth drop it tomorrow, unless it was free, I don't know if I'll pick it up. There's quite a few uh, that I've seen that have been in front of that, which uh, we might see in the new releases coming up shortly. Well, I went snooping around the store. I don't know if you blokes remember, it was a couple of weeks ago, there was a story that PSVR 2 was going to see an iteration of Beat Saber. It is the one game that they have talked about for PSVR 2 that if you go searching on the PlayStation Store, there is no listing, which to my mind is confirmation that it'll just pop up tomorrow at 11 a.m. Might be a PS Plus game. Oh, that'd be nice. I reckon if it's free, we know the sales numbers are not looking good for the headset, but uh, if it's full price game, I think Jim Crine's happy with the release. Units sold and moved on. Speaking of moving on, story three, Unky. Microsoft announces legally binding 10-year deal to bring Call of Duty, so to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo platforms. The announcement coincides with Tuesday EU hearing on the Activision Blizzard acquisition. Acquisition. So it looks like Nintendo is happy to play uh, games with uh, Microsoft. However, Sony is still sort of lagging behind in that uh, matter. But um, no, I can't wait to play Call of Duty at 12 frames per second on my Nintendo <laughs> Switch. Is what I got is out of this. Switch? Is that on the Switch 2 you're getting at 12 frames a second? You're certainly not on getting on the one we've got at the moment. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely not. So, no, it's, I mean, it's exciting for all the kids out there. All they got to play is Fortnite, having Call of Duty. If they can actually get it running, whether it's via cloud or whether it's, you know, hard copies of games, I don't know. But um, I dare say with the way Call of Duty looks these days, it'd be hard-pressed to make that thing look good in the Switch. But Oh, I'd love to do cross-play where you can just select Nintendo Switch combatants. <laughs> <laughs> bullies, bullies, kill death ratio is going up, everyone. Now, do we think the negotiations were anything more than their percentage rip of digital sales sold, or do you reckon Microsoft actually handed over money to get this deal done? I reckon they've done it as a show of good faith to, I think uh, so. to the uh, FTC and the European Commission as well. Oh, I'm sure that's the motivation, but I'm wondering if Nintendo only came to the party once there was some cash change in hands. Oh, no, I, I, I don't... Well, it depends how it plays out. I don't know how many downloads you get, but I reckon Nintendo's just happened... Well, we've seen their eShop and the trash warfare that's on that bloody thing and the amount of crud. So I think they're pretty much happy to accept whatever they get and whatever percentage of the download they get. Mm. Typical 30% deal, I would guess. Uh, mm. All right, then. Story four, shall we? Story four. Speaking uh, of VR games, uh, this seems to be a theme tonight, but we've got uh, I Expect You to Die 3. Um, Cog in the Machine will release in 2023 now. So this gets us excited. Troy and I are a fan of this game. This is oh, yes. they're playing pretty much as James Bond in these games, and they're very much puzzle solvy games, but they are so immersive. The stuff you can do in them, the... the <laughs> The funny sort of anecdotes you got to use to try and get through these levels. Somehow, I don't think I would have got through some of these levels without Troy's assistance, especially in the time that I did. But uh, no, I can't wait to see what they do with number three consideration. And they, I will definitely be getting this on the old, the old Oculus or my PSVR too, if I uh, am lucky enough to pick one up. Oh yes, I can't wait to go headlong into this one, Bully. Have you got any experience with the franchise, mate? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I think it was never on the VR one, was it? It was just on yeah, the. It was. Uh, Oh, it was, was it? Yeah, one and two. Yep. Oh, there you go. I came late to the to the VR party on the on the first version, so uh, no, I haven't jumped into that. But uh, it's just something else to look forward to on the PSVR, aren't you? Oh yes, escape and, room, if you will. And speaking of things to look forward to on the PSVR two, the next news story is Resident Evil Four remakes VR mode has started development. Will be free DLC for the PSVR two. Capcom has implied the mode won't be ready in time for the game's release, which is unfortunate. And I don't know, they say mode. So, Bully, I don't know what that means to you, but I don't think that means we're going to be playing the entirety of that game in VR. I think it's going to be a small slice or oh. something, or maybe a mercenaries mode or something like that. I've read that as the total opposite thing. I thought it meant like you boot it up and you pick, you know, 2D mode or VR mode. No, I thought I'd read that somewhere as well. It's just, It's a separate standalone VR um, campaign, I guess you can call it, or however they're going to they're gonna do it, but it's not playing through the whole game like you would in, in Resi 7 or 8. Oh, boo. I totally mm. misinterpreted that headline. Dang it. Still, exciting times. Bully, are you uh, going eyes on with this one, do you think? 
Oh, I think that'll be close enough to a day one purchase anyway for the v, taking VR out of it. I think that'll be close to a day one purchase anyway. So uh, oh, the yes. fact that they're, they're throwing that in for me uh, just gives a little Brucey bonus and probably Unky by that stage will have the VR in his hot little hand. That's right. And I think his ears were burning. Tagaro's just joined the chat just as we were talking about Resident Evil 4. What a surprise. <laughs> hey, Tagaro. He's timed it perfectly. But uh, no, I don't, I don't think Tagaro's going to be playing this thing in VR considering he wants to play it with the old control scheme. Uh, I dare say he won't be uh, chucking a headset on. So we'll have to uh, let him know what the experience is like. Sorry you weren't here for the top of the show, mate. We all had pastries. Yeah, we did. So, oh, mate, you missed it. You missed it. He was he was grilling me this week as well about that. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting news. I'm pumped for it. Man, I so wish I had a PSVR 2. Bully, I am officially incredibly jealous of your recent addition to the gaming. Uh, <laughs> gaming well, what, you don't, what you don't know is the reason, you know, we're having so many issues tonight is that Bully's actually podcasting from um, upstairs at my house on a, you know, makeshift. <laughs> Makes you think because he's no longer allowed at home. He's been kicked out by the missos. So, um, yeah, I'll just bully go, mate, up there. Well, it's funny, it's funny you say that because we were chatting before and you said, uh, how comfortable is the headset? I said, the, the headset's very comfortable. It's just a lumpy couch that I'm sleeping on at the moment. It's not. <laughs> now, bully, can I press you to hear your uh, wife's one liner? Because I thought that was a bloody ripper. Oh. <laughs> Oh, she asked how it was, and I said, oh, it's absolutely amazing. And she goes, well, for F and $900, it bloody well should be. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Great work, Mrs. Bully. All right, Unky, new releases this week, my friend. New releases, and thank God I'm not going to miss it this week because there's a lot more than the week that I did miss. There was only two then. This week we have got three pages, so I'm going to go through them very quick because most of them are PSVR 2. Uh, this week we, is, we have Aka R. PS5, Xbox Series XS, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC. Atomic Heart we spoke about tonight on everything. Feb 21, Like a Dragon Ishin. So Yakuza game is also out now. PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PS4, Xbox One, PC. Getting pretty decent reviews from all accounts. After Okay, now we've got the massive list of PSVR 2 games. So all out on February 2022, all on the VR 2 platform and Oculus. Um, after the fall... Altair Breaker, Cities VR, Cosmonius High, Demio, Digimon World, Next Order, Drums Rock, Discronia, Discronia, Chronos Alternative, Fantavision, Firewall Ultra, Gran Turismo 7, Horizon Call of the Mountain, Job Simulator, Jurassic Park World, Aftermath, Kayak VR, Mirage. He believes can't wait to play a bit of Kayak VR. <laughs> the Zuna AI Touch the Beat. Actually, looking at that one, that looks like what's more up Bully's alley. He's going to be touching something. He's going to be touching something, that's for sure. Uh, Moss, book one and two, NFL Pro Era, No Man's Sky, Pavlov VR, Whist Pistol Whip, PlayStation VR 2, it's headset, headset the cell itself, Puzzling Places, Resident Evil Village, Res Infinite, Runner, Song in the Smoke, Star Wars, Tales from the Galaxy's Edge, Synth Riders, Tentacular, Tetris Effect, The Last Clockwinder, The Light Brigade Platform, sorry, no, Platform VS VR 2, Quest PS VR and PC, the Tale of Onogoro, Thumper, Townsman VR, Vacation Simulator, What the Bat, Zenith, The Last City, Zombieland, Headshot Fever Reloaded, Blood Bowl 3 is on PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, Switch and PC on February 2023. And we've moved on from VR2 games. Company of Heroes 3 is on PC, 23rd of Feb. Grim Guardians, Demon Purge, PS5, Series X and S, PS4, Xbox One, Feb 23. Cliven Wrench, PS5, PS4, Switch PC, Feb 24, Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Decent reviews for this one too. Feb 24 on Switch, Octopath Traveler, which I think I may give a go. I've got the demo downloaded on my PS5 ready to go. Is on PS5, PS4, Switch, and PC tomorrow, Feb 24. Great. That work. is our new releases. <laughs> Great work. Thank you. Uh, Bully, any thoughts, mate, on any of those PSVR 2 titles? Will any of those be acquired before the next GEA, do you reckon? Uh, I'm not sure. We'll have to go and have a look. I reckon uh, I think we've got Moss we'll have another look at. Um, I think it's just a matter of because they, they – and it's not a bad place to be is that they've, they've dropped a lot of games uh, either on release date or the day or two afterwards. So I think for me it's just going to have to be a matter of sort of um, watching a bit of vision, doing a bit of reading and see which are the best uh, ones there are in the first week or two to sort of concentrate on and then and then go from there, I guess. But I haven't uh, 
I haven't really had much of a look at it at this stage other than um, the main ones, uh, which we've already spoken about, you know, obviously Horizon and, and um, uh, you know, just seeing Job Simulator there again. Um, mm. My understanding that was, again, didn't play it on the VR1, but was a fantastic game there. And just other ones that, you know, you it's funny you laugh at, at Kayak VR, but I've actually read some reviews on it that it is one of the most relaxing uh, games going around that you sit in a kayak and you've got these wonderful uh, views and vista to look at and you just sort of sit there and you gently paddle your way down the stream. It sounds dumb, but um, people are saying they're really enjoying it for, for, for what it is. So is. I'm reminded of Power Wash Simulator, a premise <laughs> that sounds a bit odd, but people are thoroughly enjoying. I don't know. I think I'll stick to Silent Ops. There's a game called Silent. I'm not sure if it's coming to PSP out too. Check out. You're in a canoe, but it's essentially you're in a canoe, but it's a met- you pretty much Metal Gear Solid snake in a canoe it's the game is awesome wild uh bully i don't know if you've ever played tetris connect before mate in vr but that is one heck of an experience i highly encourage you to check that one out if you can oh i've only played it on the because it came out of game pass a while ago so i've only just played it on the on the normal tv screen itself but uh it is really uh, something special in vr i don't know if you the standout one that jumps to mind is i don't know what are these world four or something but the dolphins do you recall the dolphins in the background Oh, vaguely, but that that whole thing was um, some sort of acid trip going yeah, on in the background in, with the music and the rest of it going yeah, on. Yeah, but in VR, mate, the dolphins come out from over your shoulders, and you're like, "What the hell's going on?" It's something else. <laughs> it's a, it's a sight to behold. I highly well, that, encourage you to go that one. The, the only problem is I've got no money left to be able to buy any games for it, so oh, <laughs> we just have to we have to wait for something to come up. I suppose some sale or something. I don't know. Very good. Or if, or if any if anyone's listening out there and wants to give me a code and uh, we can do a let's play of it, you know, shoot us an email or, or, or DM us in the chat. Beautiful work, Bully. Start pumping out the tweets, mate. Uh, <laughs> gentlemen, with your permission, let's go over to Ace at the Bar, shall we? Let's do it. Thanks for having me again, Troy, Sookie, and the big bully one. Ace back at ya, and this week I've got another thing that's got me bubbling and boiling about. It's the amount of times you got a bloody cast Revelio in that bloody stupid Hogwarts game that's got me addicted. So this week's big soup award goes to me. Hang on a second, me? Yeah, I'm the big sook. Now get out of here, you sook, and get on with it. <laughs> Gentlemen, fight. Who? We'll fight. Unky Dunky. Great work, Ace. Thank you for sending in the video. Unky Dunky, what are the standoff constraints this evening? Oh, a bit of a theme tonight with uh, VR out this week on the PlayStation. We are looking at the most fun we have had in a VR game experience. And we're going to find out which one of these games in our list would we recommend to you if you could play just one. There can be only one Highlander style Standoff entrant number one is, of course, Beat Saber. Why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it be? Now, I said that I would be not excited to see this thing announced for PSVR 2. That's not saying that this game is bad. This game is incredible and is still one of the best PSVR games you can actually, or best VR games you can play and most fun you can have in VR because it just makes you feel like you are a Jedi Swing into the beat and just all the songs. It's accessible to anyone. And if anything, it's probably at it, best on PlayStation VR 1, which is weird to say considering all the other ways you can play it. But because you had those stupid shit ones that are, you know, pretty much no good for any other game, but actually feels like they're holding a lightsaber. So for this one, for me, like that was, this was definitely the first VR experience I had in a, in a home capacity. And it was so much fun. And it's so much fun that my wife has probably even played more of it than I have. This game is absolutely phenomenal. My all-time favorite VR experience has to be Beat Saber. I can't recommend it enough. I really am looking forward to that stealth drop announcement tomorrow. Uh, Hands down, I would argue, the best workout available in a VR experience as well. Bully, have you gone hands-on? No, I haven't. uh, But you talk about a workout, just wait till you get to the end credits and you can see a shirtless uh, Troy bopping (laughs) his feet there. Indeed you can. Uh, (laughs) Standoff entrant two, Anki? Stand up entrant two. So we just said that Resident Evil 4 is getting only just a mode for the new game for the VR, but this is the full Resident Evil 4 as it initially was, fully in VR. This, I've spoken about this on GA before when I've played the game, but this inver- this is the best way to play that version of Resident Evil 4 as far as I'm concerned. Like, to be in that world and surrounded by 
not the necessarily the best graphics, but the, you know, people yelling at the oh, lolly no, no, in your ear and they're coming <laughs> behind you with axes. You you got the bloke chasing you with the chainsaw and it's actually chasing you. But the good thing is you can actually run and shoot because you are in VR, you're not sort of planted on the ground. So you can keep holding move and you can shoot at the same time and reload and stuff. So in terms of controls and issues people might have had with the controls of that game and that you plant you down as soon as you're shooting, you don't have those issues in this game and and the way the whole vest works, it's got a sitting down mode as well where you can play the game comfortably sitting down if you want to and everything's sort of just adjusted to grab from your chest as opposed to your hips. I think this game is just the perfect way to do VR, you know, incorporate an older game into VR. And I think they've absolutely nailed it. Like I can't think of many other better experiences I've had with a VR game, mainly because Resi 4 is one of my favourite games of all time. But to then play it in that manner, I just can't wait. And it's I know they've come out and pipe dream at the moment because they've mentioned that Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is being done but if they can do a similar thing that they did with uh, Resi 4 with GTA I'm very excited I would love to go hands on with this game I've never played the VR version of it but absolutely love it in uh, 2D mode if you like what about you Billy? No I never went hands on with the VR version so uh, does seem pretty good from the way Unky's describing it though I'm not sure I could to, could do it for very long, though. Resi Evil 7 in VR sort of didn't last too long. That was far too terrifying for me. <laughs> I suspect I would suffer the same fate with number four. Uh, standoff Entrance 3 this week. Who doesn't love a bit of super hot action? Super hot. Super, super hot. Hot. Now, this is one game that I think I did actually play it on the PSVR 1 back in the day, but I found myself always getting in the way with the cables and stuff, which is one thing that that you know, that iteration of VR didn't do too well with the amount of cables. But since playing this game on the Oculus with, you know, no cables whatsoever, this is an absolute blast. To explain it to anyone that hasn't played it, essentially you're in these big white rooms with a combat scenario and every time you move, the characters move and you've got to essentially kill everyone in that room. They're all sort of made out of this like black glass stuff. So it's all kind of satisfying to hit them with bullets or ninja stars or bottles and stuff. But it's got cool mechanics where if you move and shoot them and they're holding a gun, the gun might fly towards you. You can grab it out of the air and shoot the other guy while picking up a ninja star with your left hand, taking him out. Essentially, if you just fail that, then you start the series of levels again and then you've got to get yourself to the end. And what a game. With such cool mechanics. I, can't, I know you can get this game non-VR. I just don't know why you would because I think that's part pretty much the appeal of this game. I agree completely, man. The one thing you didn't mention that i got to shout out is that you can snatch the weapons off your enemies. You can just reach out and pull the gun out of their hand and then shoot them with their own weapon, which is always fun. And the shout out to the achievement. What is it? You punch someone enough to break them. After you've killed them, you can continue yes. to hit the body. And if you can dismantle the body before it hits the ground, there's a Chivo in it for you. Uh, I'll say the PS VR one version of this really suffered from the wand tracking being so terrible. Yeah, I, that's true. Playing this on PC with phenomenal hand tracking, this game is really something else. Uh, has it been announced? I hope it's announced for the PSVR 2. One hell of a game. Bully, have you got oh. hands on with the old Super Hot? Uh, no, I haven't. But uh, just when you talk about the hand tracking, I think that's one of the the uh, beneficiaries of the, the VR 2 version is that it actually tracks individually your fingers as you're moving them as well. So um, hopefully that if it does end up coming over to the VR 2, um, that'll make it a lot uh, lot better to play, I would have thought. Oh, yes. Love some good hand tracking, especially in Superhot. That tie, oh, that little section where it's like the Matrix in the helicopter. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, entrant number four this week, speaking of phenomenal VR, half four, Alex. Alex, and I can't speak a whole lot to it other than then I have done a playthrough with Troy in the studio with this game, and this is what I've gone, <laughs> This is what PC VR looks like compared to everything else. Because <laughs> goddamn, it's different. So I can only imagine it's you know PSVR two is probably pumping out something very similar to what um, I experienced that time with you, Troy, playing this game. But um, I just wanted more of that game. I could have sat there for eight hours playing that video game that day, and it's, that's why that if PSVR two you know announces tomorrow that this is coming to that platform, I can't see myself not wanting to fork over the nine hundred and whatever dollars it is for that headset to play this game again, just because the way... That... Is that a hard fact? If they announce this tomorrow, you're going to march out and get one? Uh, I wouldn't be far off, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a fair stealth drop. Uh, if they, I, I think they'd want to build a little bit more hype because if people if they knew that game was coming, they'd probably sell more VR units. So I don't know why you would hold on to it. Um, that's my only 
thought that I had today about it that they, if they were going to show drop, it's a bit silly because they probably want to sell units and they, what better way to sell units than say half life's coming on day, you know, whatever it is. When when's it come out? Wednesday. Day three. Day three. So yeah. So if if this comes, I can't wait because yeah, Troy. Just the way that combat worked, the way the puzzles worked, the way it looked, just the atmosphere. Oh, that game so good. Oh, yes, that is. It was such a, I don't know if you blokes remember playing Half-Life 2 for the first time on PC, but it was that whole, oh, my God, this is like a first-person shooter, but next-level first-person shooter. The physics mechanics introduction was phenomenal. But this was that exact same experience. Like, oh, my God, this is next-level gaming. Valve have done it again. So, yes, I would absolutely love this to come to the PSVR 2. And, yes, it would make me request it all the more. Bully, would you go hands-on immediately? Oh, 100%. I think I'm sort of the same as uh, Anki. I think I only played it uh, for a half hour or so at your house, Troy, when we were doing some uh, some filming over there. And um, to, to be fair, I'd spent most of my time there trying to shoot the bloke who was helping you through the window <laughs> but and, and throw random cans at him. But, but um, it, it looked amazing. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'd love to get... Love to get uh, further and deeper into it, so hopefully it does. Um, I can't see why it wouldn't, to be honest with you. I think that the VR two is up to a standard um, that it should be able to play it uh, in, oh, in some definitely. way, shape, in some way, shape or form. So I, I can't imagine it's not going to come. It's just a matter of when. It just depends how much Gabe Newell wants to keep the exclusive on his platform. But uh, hopefully he's feeling a bit generous, or Jim Cryan Ryan paid him a ridiculous amount of money to make it happen. Fingers are crossed on this one. Uh, all right, then. Entrant number five this week. Oh, my goodness. Bully, I reckon this might be your ticket. Oh. This one. Bully, did you play this one? Oh, did I? What? Oh, what an experience. Tell us about it. Oh, the Batman VR or Batman Arkham VR. I, I loved it. It was only a really short game. Look, it, it didn't go for too long. But um, if I recall correctly, you basically get through the opening section and you're standing up the top of a tower looking over the top and you you start looking around and you can see your hands as Batman's gloves and you you can see the you look behind, you can see the cape fluttering around. And I reckon you probably didn't need to do anything else in that game rather than just let me stand up the top of a tower as Batman <laughs> and I was happy as Larry. <laughs> um, but as I said, fairly short game, you, it, short, short-lived, but it, it gave you enough of... Uh, and experiences to what it would be like to be Batman and, and move around. And, um, you know, there was some light puzzle solving in there as well that you, you sort of went through, but I really enjoyed it. Even though it was, as, I, as I've mentioned, uh, fairly short in length. And um, that's one of the ones that I was really looking or hoping that they'd, uh, they'd uh, do another version of that for the VR too, um, you know, obviously with the better specs and all the rest of it, sort of flesh it out and, and make it maybe a, a four or five hour game as opposed to a, you know, 60 to 90 minute one. Yeah, I loved it as well, mate. I thought it was great. From memory, I think you uh, find yourself perched next to a gargoyle, which was pretty iconic uh, at the start of the movie. I loved it. I'm a huge Batman fan, as we all know. So to go cowl on was fantastic. This is the one title that I would allow them to say they shadow dropped. Anki, your thoughts on it? No, I love this. I remember just standing there and like looking around the back cave and looking myself in the mirror and you even get the reflection of you being Batman. You like to you could do the Batman dance if you wanted to and like, you know, yell at people and say, Where are the drugs? And just <laughs> role, role play that Batman. It was it was awesome and it just looked so cool. Like the graphically, um, it was one of the better things I think I saw on the PSVR one as well. Um mm. and, and I just yeah, it's, as Bully said, um you just it's almost makes you really wish they did something more with it um either a sequel or just a more fully fleshed out full game because that experience just was top tier when it came to vr experiences it was something special i agree maybe tomorrow fingers crossed (laughs) entrant number six unky i expect you to die too Um, (laughs) no what a game again um we did a tourist of this on GS. If you want to check that out, it's uh, Troy taking me through. I expected to die too, and uh, very much helped me walk me through it because, uh, yeah, some of those puzzles for me were very difficult. But once you get to get the swing of you know what they want you to do and how they want you to do, it's very fun trying to figure out the puzzles. And I think it's one of those best style of games where you're in kind of like an escape room type situation, but just the, the situations they put you in are just so 
fantastic or amazing. Uh, the standout for me was, the, I think, Troy, probably the one on the aeroplane where you're trying to yeah. work your way out of that one. That was, and putting up trays to stop the lasers shooting you in the face. And, oh, it just oh, it, was, it was such a good experience. And as we saw before, that uh, number three uh, looks like it's coming out this year. So I'm excited for that because this was such a cool experience. It was. I love the gameplay in this, like top-notch escape room, as you said, but also a shout-out to the script writers in this because they have nailed a James Bond parody. I love the scenarios they build. And it's tiny, but there's, you know, a little bit of narrative leading into and out of every mission. And it's just a beautiful way to tie it all together. Well written. Bully, have you gone hands-on? No, you said earlier tonight you haven't played any of this, didn't you? No, no, I haven't played any of that, but uh, you're certainly uh, you're certainly selling it to, to be well. So hopefully they bring out the first two as a re-release uh, at some point prior to the third. Yes. Fingers crossed you get to go hands-on with it. Uh, entrant number seven. Now, this one I've only played ever so briefly. Unky. I played this briefly as well, but for that brief time that I did play it, this is one of those things that you dream of as a child is being in the cockpit of a uh, X-Wing in Star Wars flying. And when they put you in that cockpit and you can look out left, right and see your wings flying through space, that experience for me was enough. Like (laughs) that's all I really needed from this. Like the game itself, I didn't play for that long at all, but I would just sit in their cockpit and just look around and just imagine myself in space flying this thing. It was such a cool experience. Phenomenal. Best Star Wars experience since the N64, and I'm blanking on that name. Squadron. Squadron. Rogue Squadron. Squadron. There it is. I loved it. Bully, have you uh, played this one, mate? Yeah, probably did about three or four hours into it. I think one of the things that I, I thought was really good about it is in the initial stages when we're sort of going through how does VR work when you're you know either standing stationary or sitting on a couch or whatever as to how you uh, employ movement into the game without making people have that motion sickness um, mm. by, you know, walking through it. And, and this was one of the best examples of how to do it is you're sitting in a cockpit. Um, yes, you're moving around, but you're not uh, – if you're sitting in a cockpit in the plane, you're not physically moving yourself. It's the plane moving. So I, th- I thought that was a great way to alleviate that um, sort of concern for some people. But as you've touched on as well, that you know, to sit in any of those uh, fighters, it didn't matter which one it was or which side you picked or – whatever it was, just to start flying around in those and, and letting off the lasers and the pew, 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 pew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was absolutely amazing. Um, and, yeah, that's another one, I suppose, is, um, you know, with the, with the better equipment and the and the, the better specs on it, you know, that's something that could be fleshed out and, and made even better, which is probably something you could say for most of these um, VR titles is, uh, you know, hopefully we get a, a version 2 to go with the PR, uh, PSVR 2 that fleshes things out, makes it bigger, makes it more interesting. And, um, you know, you don't need a full-size 15, 20-hour game, but maybe a 5 to 10-hour game just to flesh things out I think would be fantastic. Mm, my only request if this one comes over is they support that flight stick because flying with a joystick in this in VR would be absolutely next level for me. Uh, well, you've got your hand controllers. You can just move your hands around, Troy. No, but I'm saying I want the feel of the actual joystick. Give me some, you know, throttle and stuff. I love it. Better controllers. Like, uh, I don't think we've got one in this list, but if you do a driving game and you've got the steering wheel but the VR headset on, that's really next level stuff. I love it. Oh, uh, yeah. oh no, there's nothing like having a good stick in your hand, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. Keep talking and no one explodes. I feel like I'm the only bloke here that's played this, so I might take the biscuits. Uh, this is a really unique VR experience in that half of the game is played by a second person, not in VR. They're looking at it, you know, on a web browser, their phone, iPad, what have you. Uh, and they're giving you the instructions for, you know, decoding the bomb or solving the riddle, but you've got to talk to each other. The, what you see in VR is not shown on screen for the, your sort of co-op partner and your co-op partner needs to decipher what you're saying and then translate it to this document in a web browser or PDF, I think. Uh, And then you've got to negotiate how to, oh, okay, what's the combination? What buttons, what colors are you seeing? It's really something else. If you want to start a fight with your missus, this is a pretty good way to get it done. (laughs) Uh, Or you can just buy PSVR 2 and have a fight. I don't know. (laughs) Does it sound interesting? Would you be interested in some couch co-op with a 2D screen viewing partner? Oh, you get oh, a cracker. I can see it's fun. Yeah, I agree. It'd be, it, I don't know how long it would last for, but, uh, you know, certainly to jump in and jump out and have a little bit of a, a bit of a crack at it 
um, you know, for 20 minutes, half an hour, I reckon it'd be enjoyable. Yeah, I think each round was maybe five minutes, if that. But yeah, a really fantastic co-op experience. All right, number nine this week, the final entrant. Oh, before we kick it off, I'll just remind all the viewers uh, in the live YouTube chat, please get your votes in now in chat land. Will you rack it up? Over to you, Anki, for entrant nine. Entrant number nine, this one's more for me because I've played this game a lot since it came out. And I'm a cricket fan, so I put it on here because I know Bully likes his cricket as well. Um, in terms of VR cricket, this thing is incredible. It puts you on the pitch, in the massive stadium, with someone rock, like coming in and just you got spinners, you got fast bowlers, and you are on the pitch and you are playing your shots as you would in a normal cricket pitch. And it, the way the sound effects work, the way the gameplay works, it's real easy, real fun. I can sit there for like you know easily half an hour, which is you know usually pretty hard for me to do in VR. But you can sit there for ages, just like knocking away. Uh, balls, you can ramp up the difficulty and make the balls come in faster. You can put the spot on your bat to be sort of smaller, so you know your the, your accuracy has to be way better than what it was if you've got it set up to 100%. But like, just such a fun little game to play, and they've just nailed that feeling of cricket and being on a pitch. You don't have to run, so you're just playing your shots, and your players will run, and the crowd cheers when you hit fours and sixes, like fireworks and stuff go off. So it's like being on the pitch during a 2020. So I know, bully, I think you'd have a lot of fun with this one. Yeah, it sounds, sort of sounds like, I don't know if you guys ever played that um, mobile game, and it actually wasn't bad for a mobile stick game. Stick cricket? Stick cricket, um, <laughs> where you sort of, you don't bat, you don't bowl, you don't field, you just sit there and just cop the balls and you got to, it's ridiculous because you're hitting fours and sixes every, yeah. every ball. There's no, um, you know, there's no sort of just working your way through it. It's just, just hit and giggle. So um, if it's that sort of thing where you're just literally sitting there just swinging a bat around and hitting sixes all over the place, I'll be all over that 100%. No, it's, it is kind of like that, but you can like edge it. You can like play like cut shots and drives, like everything you're trying to do. If you miss it slightly, you might edge it to the keeper. Like it is such a good simulation of cricket. But it, yeah, it's also got that arcade thing where you can just like get on one knee, knee and slog sweep it over the boundary for six. It's fantastic. Uh, now I have gone hands on with this title. It was fine. I played it. Uh, the person who'd set it up had it on a actual cricket bat. That like oh, uh, yeah. luck abandoned the. Uh, VR controller onto a cricket bat. So that was a lot of fun attaching it to that. How do you reckon you'd go, Bully, getting the new PSVR 2 controller like a banded to a real cricket bat? Oh, that sounds like a broken TV, if ever I've ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question to you, Unky, is I don't think there is, but can you bowl in this or is it only batting? Well, I, it's had an update, which I did update it today when I jumped in and had a quick go, and I think you, there is bowling in it now. So I haven't actually given it a crack, but you can do spin bowling and fast bowling now. I might have to give it a crack. I'm not sure if my shoulders will uh, you know, be able to do it because, you know, old age and all. But um, no, I I, you can I said holding up those guns, Anki. <laughs> <laughs> it's... It's hard. It's hard. Uh, no, I just, like Bully said, like, it's just like stick cricket. Like, you don't need to bowl. Like, all the fun's in the batting. Every time I've ever played a cricket game, I always fast forward the bowling aspect most of the time and just do the batting. So that's what this game does, and it does it really well. And I have, I've had so much fun and probably spent more time in this game more recently than any other VR game, except for a few that are on our list that didn't quite make it tonight. Very good. Do you want to shout them out now, Unky, or should we uh, get... I'll do a very, very quick shout-out. I had Skyrim on here because that was, again, another experience. Skyrim, massive world, being able to live that world in the VR experience, kind of like Resident 4, just a surreal experience being in that world. Pistol Whip's another one that if you don't Ooh, like yeah. the sword, Swords of Beat Saber, this is essentially John Wick on rails with beats. Just um, on that. Passing through here as well. If I could just point out, we've got a Let's Play of that from about two months ago on the channel if you want to see some um, Pistol Whip action. Uh, check it out. Great game. Uh, also very good for the getting the sweat building up. And then I've got Zero Calibre Reload, another one I was playing today as well. This is as close as you're going to get to a Call of Duty campaign game on a VR experience, and I love this game. I think it's amazing. Like, you get you go through the campaign, unlock different guns, different attachments for your guns and stuff, so they've got a favourite um, weapon, and it's got, like, a laser sight and stuff. You can, like, bring up two hands and aim down the sight and everything as well. Really good fun. Nail your headshots and just, yeah, kind of like Call of Duty style. It's got different sort of levels that you can go through and objectives you've got to hit, but, no, a lot of fun. Monster closets? Monster closets, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, my nomination this week, I can't go past Beat Saber. It hands down has the most hours played by me. Fun, fun, fun for me. Standoff entrant one. What about you, fellas? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, we have to pick one if we're saying if you have to only pick one game. And if we're going for a broad audience in terms of one game, then Beat Saber is probably very much high on that list, even though I would – argue there's better games on here but beat saber when that beats pumping and you're going with those lightsabers there's not many other experiences like it 
Yeah, especially with all the DLC they've got out now. You know, really diverse uh, mix of music you can play. Bully yeah, yeah there's a lot, a, lot, a lot of license track stuff as well. Yeah, yep. Um, oh, look, it's probably a little bit hard for me at being late to the VR game, and I, I've probably only gone through half of these, but I would have gone with, with Batman, just the experience of, of playing Batman in, in that one and, and how it makes you feel and all the rest of it. But uh, I'm yeah. more than more than happy uh, to defer to uh, some more well-rounded VR gentlemen in your cells and uh, head over to Beat Saber. But I will say that uh, Tigaro was happy to wrap this up about 15 minutes ago once we mentioned Resi 4. He's nominated that as the winner and just wanted to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic works. Well, in that case, gentlemen, I suggest we nominate uh, Beat Saber. You are, as declared by tonight's standoff, the most fun VR experience we've had. Full playthrough available on Geek Aloud, which brings us over to the audience Q&A part of the uh, part of the show, fellas. Bully, what's happening in that chat? Interrogate. Uh, we've had uh, Sean Games in there. Um, he's telling us uh, again how much he loves the the Last of Us on HBO uh, or whatever streaming service you are watching it on. Uh, Matt Forty Seven jumped in there when we were talking about Atomic Heart and his favourite old history Soviet Union type uh, game was Singularity from the Xbox and uh, 360 and PS3 era, which uh, we were sort of discussing in the chat there. We'd love to see it come back, but unfortunately not backwards compatible with the new system. So you'd have to either crank out one of the old systems or hope uh, that it comes out on uh, PS Plus or something along those lines uh, as well. And uh, just to wrap it up, I will say, um, again, a massive thanks to Tigaro, who's uh, thrown... uh, another donation in there for the uh, pastries that he missed out on at the start of the show. Ah, beautiful work. Thank you, Tagaro. Gentlemen, and, I, uh, oh, no, I was just going to say, that's pretty much it for the chat for tonight. So thanks for everyone for jumping in there. Great work, everyone. If you're listening to this as a podcast after the fact, you really should prioritise getting by one of these Thursday night 8pm streams so you can participate with us as we go. But for now, gentlemen, we are off duty. One little shout out from me. Uh, as you can see on the couch next to me, we've got Chai. He's invaded GEA because during the week I invaded uh, Hi Fi Rush. That video is available on the channel. I encourage you to check it out. Bully, thank you for joining us this evening, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll uh, hopefully have a lot more to say next week with the PSVR. And I'm pretty sure that Unky's going to be joining me. Looking forward to it and certainly hoping so. Unky, mate, thank you for your input this evening. Hey, my pleasure. Happy to be here. Fantastic. Anki, what else can you do with the channel? Well, you can like it, subscribe it. You'll never miss it. Yeah. <laughs>